YouTube. It's Brian Phillips. Welcome to the show. We're gonna open this box right now and it's gonna be amazing. So guys, this is all new for Brian Phillips RC and we hope it's as good as we expect, okay? Here goes nothing. This one's packed in a white box uh, and just gotta make sure there's nothing else in there. I don't think there's anything else in there. Nope. Just put this out of the way. Oh yes, nothing like a wonderful beaver to make my day better. Beaver. What is the size? 1.5. This 1.5 meter beaver? Are you kidding me? That's amazing. Very cool. Uh, ready to fly in two to three hours. Well, that's kind of scary. We were just talking about this. So why, would it, why would it take two to three hours? I'm still confused. <laughs> oh, better than like your 15 minute. We're going to find out right now. Unfolded manual. Thank you, Tower Hobbies. <laughs> okay, so we've got a uh, picture of the plane. Looks beautiful. And we do really like a good beaver here on Brian Phillips RC. It's one of my favorite things to use in the air. I promise. That is a gorgeous trim livery. There's a whale. Amazing. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is for the tail dragger. That tail looks small. Oh, because the beaver tail is small, evidently. This is a 1.5 meter. Apparently. Wow, that's gorgeous. Look I at like that. The colors. I know. I love the silver. Yeah. Oh, like by the way. Oh, 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 if this what? is a beaver, whoa, amazing. Look at that, gorgeous. Really like the colors. We have a pond we're building right now, so I wonder if this thing's float equipped. Oh, yeah. I think I just answered my own question, folks. Booyah, beaver. Oh, they're silver. Yeah, and they've got decals on them, which is awesome. And there is a steerable rudder, which is pretty sweet. I want to cut this open because there are decals on the side. I think this whole two to three hour thing must have been before. They must have done more work on this because I can already tell right yeah. now. I mean, you only have two pieces out. Listen, I'm being, I'm being an optimist. Okay, so let's pull this thing out. Ooh, yeah. Look at that. So sweet. Oh, cool. So it tells you where to plug everything into. Ooh, what the heck happened there? That doesn't look good. Hmm, okay, then we have this little divider thing here. So we'll see how this goes here in a little bit. We'll put that next to the other float equipped plane. <laughs> that plane is cool. I can't wait to see it fly, but we've had just terrible weather here. <gasps> oh man. Oh, look at that. I love that tire. It's so light, but it's got a little bit of squish to it. It's not, not as squishy as I thought it was gonna be. Let's see how this goes. Oh yeah, remove plate before installing onto the, whoa, squished, squished. Jeez, what hmm. the heck? I think we're gonna have to talk to the shipping manager here about this. But otherwise the wheel looks beautiful. I love the ribs in there, it looks real. Or the tread pattern rather, not the mm -hmm. ribs. Okay, so we're just gonna keep going, guys. Uh, it's just kind of like thrown in here weirdly. This one doesn't seem like it's got any dings on it. I wonder what the heck happened to that. I hope that's a fluke. Yeah. Because otherwise that would uh, not be really cool because there was a lot of damage on the side of that thing. This is one of these like low packaging, you know, boxes. So, you know, the foam to protect the foam from the foam. Sometimes they don't get the foam in the right spot. Yeah, see, that one's perfect. Yeah, what the heck happened on the other one? Oh, that's like stuck into the hole. Huh, interesting. So as you know, the Beaver is a really popular float plane, uh, especially up in Alaska, which is super cool. So when we get our pond done, we'll definitely be doing, like most of these planes that we've done without floats, we're gonna definitely do with floats. Oh, I thought you were gonna say we're gonna go to Alaska. No, <laughs> no. We're not gonna necessarily do that. Although, maybe, I mean, we can still go to Alaska, but not for this reason. If you guys hear incessant beeping in the background, it's because we're charging some 1S packs. My apologies. No damage here. I don't know what the heck happened, hmm. but that looks pretty good. That's just the edges thin. Okay, we're gonna see how the rest of it comes out. I love the silver. Yeah. Silver is a cool color, but silver is hard to match. Yes. 
All right, so we got some wing struts here. Oh no, that's a prop. Prop and spinner, it's all together. You know what's weird? This thing has like the same Ooh. size mm, yeah. chrome. So same pretty. Size prop. It's not the same size prop. This is actually smaller. Look at this, guys. I think that thing's smaller. Nope, it's bigger. Not much. The chrome is awesome. Okay, so continuing onward. Uh, these unboxes are a little bit different. What the heck? Maybe oh, I thought it was over. a second prop. Oh. It's not a second prop. This is like wing struts, okay? This is probably gonna be for the floats and stuff too, I bet. This might be for the floats. Yeah, this oh. is definitely for the floats, guys. So the float set, aluminum, that is really cool. There's probably gonna be a couple of these that we need and then the rest are gonna be for the floats. So very detailed float set. I do wrap my floats and float kits in a bag or some sort of a plastic wrap and then I can get them out when I need them. And I always label the package because a lot of these floats end up looking the same, okay? So here is a tail dragger assembly. Okay, so you can tell a little bit of squish. Ooh, that one's like really soft, beautiful. Okay, and then we have some, these are the things that go on the end of the wings and then a, a quite a few more screws. So mm -hmm. I think we're answering our question there, camera crew. Yeah. And then this is the wing clippy doohickeys and then a Y cable for the ailerons and a nice big piece of hook and loop, also known as Velcro for normal people. Okay, then continuing onward, we have a wing. So guys, if you don't like watching the unboxes, I completely understand. And you're just here for the radio setup portion of this. You can always skip ahead and you're not gonna hurt our feelings. But the truth is we do appreciate if you watch our videos in their entirety. Wow, that is a pretty wing. Yeah. I love the flat red. I do too. Fully painted, it looks like, and beautiful lights. Nice. Nice separation between the colors in case there was a jigging issue there. But those look really good. Accessible panel for the servo. Screw zert, nut zert sort of thing. And then of course the linkage for the flap. So it's got the same type of flap design as what we had hmm. on the on the sea, sea wind. wind. Okay, so beautiful. We'll take out the other wing. Of course, they've got this cardboard here to protect it. So I don't know what happened with that float because everything so far has come out really nice with the exception yeah. of that one float and then just a little, little bit of ding on that. And that one was kind of just like tossed in there. Yeah, like, I wonder if they like screwed with it before they shipped it. Um, but I, I don't know, honestly. I'm not sure what to tell you. All I know is that we've only had one other manufacturer really ship them like this. Did the ASW28 from Tower come this way? Because they definitely ship things different. I think so. I think it was similar. What the packaging. heck? There's two in this and then one in that. That is so weird. That is weird. I wonder if one of these is going to come out and then it's going to go to the uh, tail feathers or something like that. But why would they have two in one wing and one in the other? That is so highly unusual. See this? Yeah, that is weird. I don't understand that at all. Got a oh, this goes over the top of the other one. I bet. I bet that's how that goes. Because mm. I'm just trying to figure that out. Well, anyway, we'll figure it out in a few minutes. There was a forward facing light on that one, on that wing too. Oh yeah? Yeah. Like a nice, light. so we have like a landing light. Okay. So just kind of keep packing the foam over here and you know, in case we need it for something. Right. Like if we need to move or whatever. Yeah. Or I get kicked out of the that. house. Yeah. Yeah. You never know when that's going to happen, people. You got to be ready. You remember when we moved and we had to pay the college kids to like take all the crap out yeah. from our... These are the wing struts. Okay. So that's the parts we're going to be using for the plane. And they are aluminum. Very cool. All right. And the money shot's coming, guys. We got the fuselage here. As you can see, it's about ready to pop out of here. And I'm kind of dying to see it. This is a 1.5 meter, but man, it is smaller than I thought it was going to be for the being wings, a 1.5. It seems like a more narrow wing cord maybe than I was that's, expecting. Yeah, I know. That's what I thought too. Oh, oh yeah, wow. that's beautiful. So pretty. Oh man. Okay, hold on. I'm trying to get this out. 
Wow, love the simulated engine. Lady Esther, that tape looks kind of uggo. Might have to take that off at some point. But I love the paint. Looks like the body is unpainted in his regular white foam here. Let's go ahead and get this. Everything's out of the box now. Oh, goodness gracious. That looks so sweet. Is that where the battery goes? That's what I was just looking at. How the heck do you get the battery in? That turns? Or is that like a receiver port or something? I don't know. We'll have to come back to that. Okay. But I was going to say, what a gorgeous looking body on there. I love me a good beaver. Prop shaft here. Looks like the motor is a brushless outrunner. I'm trying to get to where I can read what it is. It's a tower hobbies 4011 850 KV. So a pretty big motor for this size of plane. It's not as big as I was expecting for that size class. 1.5 meter. That thing's 1.4 meter just to give you an idea. Mm -hmm. But it's 1.4 meter because the body is not part of the wing. Same thing on this. The wing on a lot of planes comes off. This one is going to stick in from either side. So it does end up being pretty big, but man, it is super detailed. Mm -hmm. And cannot wait to see that up in the air. But I gotta say, look at that. That wing is thin. Mm -hmm. But I love the way the control surfaces look. They're so clean and they've got that sharp edge on the back. We're not used to seeing that. And then we've got all these little details here. Love these offset. That's so pretty. So I can't wait to see how this thing performs. I'm excited. But at the same time, I got to say, this one's probably going to take longer to build than that one, which is unusual. I, I'm very surprised by that. And I'm trying to figure out how the heck you're going to get the battery in. Where is it going to go? Yeah, like what, what is going to happen with this? Yeah. Oh, is there a hatch cover in there? I'm guessing. This must come out. Like how the heck does this open? Because this is, yeah, this goes in there. Yeah, yeah, that's the hatch access. And it's got the twin antennas there. And then this has the seats like we saw in. I wonder if it's the exact same seats. Because look, I have some seats here. Hey, look, do you look the same? Look, I have some extra seats here. Because by the, oh yeah, you're not going to be able to get that in there. Nope. How the heck did they do that? Obviously, they put the halves together. Before and then, they put their halves together? Does, where does it open? I can't even tell where it where opens. Where does the battery go? Oh, does this, does this pull off? No. You might have to like read Read the directions. manual? That's terrible. We can't be doing okay, that. Okay, figure out how the bottom opens then. Okay, so if we do that. That's not big enough for a battery either. Well, maybe it is. Because sometimes the batteries go vertical. Oh. So I'm wondering if the battery needs to slide up in there. Let's look at the manual for a sec. Okay, we're just gonna pull this thing out. Tower Hobby stickers, Tower Hobby stickers, and then there's the manual. This manual is like really thin though, so I'm a little bit concerned there won't be very much in here. Okay, so the contents of the box. Oh, there, where my camera is on this side. They changed it. Look at those little wheels. This looks so much better than oh. the ones that they included in this picture. Yes. They look sweet. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, there's a pretty complex build when it comes to the floats, mm -hmm. if you're gonna do floats. This is all mounted on the outside. That's not too bad at all. I thought that was gonna be complicated. Okay. But it looks like we've just got a number of different um, attachment points there. And then there's a linkage that goes forward. That's gonna take up a bunch of parts for just the tail dragger. Sure, sure, no, sure. No, I'm serious, like it really will. And then obviously we've got rudder hooks. So yeah, so those are used to actually attach out to the floats should you use floats. Oh. And then those are the vertical stabilizer or a horizontal stabilizer has the vertical stabilizers. I forget what they call that. They're on the end, which is what we've seen customary on a beaver. But yeah, it looks like this should be pretty, pretty easy build. It's just a matter of a number of parts. It doesn't actually look that bad. I thought it was gonna be worse than that. Okay, here you go. Battery install. It does go on the bottom. Why would they put it on the bottom of a float plane? That's the same thing they did with the uh, 
timber. So what battery does it need? That one. Oh, we Looks, have one of those stripey zebra -y looking batteries. Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure that's a 3S because I'm counting one, two, is that 3S? Yeah, one, two, three, four wires. Okay. Okay, so it's just gonna be slid up in there. Holy cow, look at all that, that's all on the bottom. Holy cow, that's gonna be so tight. What is this guy doing? Lightly wet the threads with thread locker? For what? Why is there a, ma oh, he put a magnet on there to hold the screw on, that's pretty smart. Yeah, magnet. So connect the ESC, then the elevator servo. Looks like a relatively easy setup. This guy is digging into the wing to get access to the aileron. I hope we don't have to mess with that crap. Yeah, why not? Oh man, look how nice those floats look. So gorgeous. That and you see, cool. see the strings go down and then they control the water rudder. Is there a water rudder on both sides? I thought it was just one. No. Oh yeah, there's there one is on, on both. Side. Yep. Yeah, it's just that it happened to fall behind um, the other float, okay? Oh. So the electronic speed calibration, which by the way, they we didn't have to do that on the sea, sea wind either. Mm -hmm. So I think what's going on is some of the setup that they anticipated, because this is a re-release from years past, they must have done for us, because this is gonna be a lot easier build than what they show in the manual, I think. This is me trying to trick the camera crew into building it. <laughs> so, but that being said, guys, uh, looks like it still has one singular flap servo, and it's just a, it's a weird mechanism that actually moves this linkage on both sides simultaneously from one servo, which is just so weird, because like the actuation of the servo is opposite for one side to the other. And I, I just think that's the coolest weird. thing. Um, because, you know, We've only been in a hobby for like nine years, but as a kid, I would have been around some of this stuff, but I was not in a hobby myself as a kid. I would have killed to be in the hobby like this. So you see this one pushes to go down and then this one pulls to go down. So when they're lined up together, like they will be when you pass this through, that is so strange that there's two on this side. Okay, look at this, watch this. Isn't that just so weird? That is weird. Okay, so I don't understand why there's two like that. Because there's two holes here, and then there's two holes here, and a total of three holes all together. Oh, so they don't line up with each other. They just like slide in there, look. How the heck am I gonna get those wires down there though? There's like a chairs in the way. How is the pilot gonna control everything? when there's a bunch of holes in the way, or a bunch of wires in the way. That's a, that's a real question for Why you, Kim. Why are you putting Kim. the wings on first? Well, I just, I wanna see how this assembly works. Or are you saying don't do that? They're just gonna be in the way. I hate it when you're right. I know, I'm sorry. You should be used to it by now. Cause you film it. Me being wrong. Okay, remove plate before installing on the model. How do you remove the plate, guys? Let's show the people at home what I'm doing here. Oh, it's just stuck on there with mm. double-sided tape. Yeah, it's literally just double-sided tape. Okay. I'm gonna peel that off so it's out of the way. So guys, if you're new to the channel, this is Brian Phillips RC, and we unbox, build, and radio set up these planes for your viewing pleasure or displeasure, depending on how terrible it goes. Uh, at the end of the day, we wanna try to help people get into this hobby and if you're new to the hobby, we want to help teach you how to do it so that it's as painless as possible and you can have some level of efficiency and possibly buy the right planes at the right time for the right reasons. That's pretty sweet right there. But there is a gap there. And I think that gap is there so that this can pass through at, in some way, somehow. I don't think it goes behind. I think it's going to go in front. Okay. So we'll have to, again, refer to the instruction manual for that. But this is the unbox portion of the unbox build radio setup. So what that means is I do have to sometimes work through the details on these builds because I've never done it before on this particular plane. We've done a lot of other planes. You might want to trim that on your own plane. There's some extra. Oh, yeah. yeah, not a big deal. But uh, that being said, I think this build is going to be relatively simple. 
but it's still going to take a little bit of time. So we may end up having to come back to this, right, camera crew? Because mm -hmm. it's like almost 11 o'clock. Yeah. And I'm just looking at this bag of goodies here. And I think a lot of this stuff is going to be pertaining to floats, guys. So if you're wanting to see me build the floats, you'll want to come back for a second thoughts where we in investigate the floats. I just want you all to understand that when we say we're going to do something, we really do mean it unless our circumstances change. Like for instance, the plane gets crashed or something crazy like that. And so we physically don't have it. Or our pond doesn't fill up with water. Or our water. pond doesn't fill up with water. And then we have to wait until we, we to... cry enough that it fills up with our tears. With our tears, yes. Because that's literally what's going to happen. Yeah. Maybe you guys can come and cry with, cry us, with us and we'll fill the pond in as a giant crew. But the truth is we should be digging the pond here pretty quick. We're just waiting on some unexpected delays because of equipment failures and also for permitting to get approved. So if you guys are watching this and you're like, but you said last week it was gonna be this week. Believe me, I did because I thought it was and I was wrong like Oops. usual. I'm married, I'm used to these things. But honestly, our optimistic timeline started in March. Yeah, it's now October. It's October. And when you're seeing this, it's late October. Okay, so we have landing gear. So just looking over the parts, guys, it doesn't look like it's gonna be too bad, but there are gonna be some, there's gonna be some screws that need to be twisted and turned in and some landing gear that need to be installed. And that's gonna take some time. Rather than rush this, we'll probably end up coming back to the build, but just wanna give you guys full disclosure with the build, there are quite a few components. Cause if you look at the uh, nut and bolt sack in this plane, mm -hmm. compared to the nut and bolt sack in the other planes, I am gonna go ahead and put this by the floats. So you're just, just assuming that's all floats? I'm assuming okay. it is because I'm correct. Okay. This just like time. other things. Right. Like the timeline I just discussed being you wrong. You got a good with. track record of that tonight. That's right. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. You're right on camera crew. Well. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna pause the video, we'll get things cleaned up and come right back with the build. So if it's like bright and sunny, you'll understand that it just took us five minutes to do that. So we took a little bit to clean up and now the sun's <laughs> out. We found a screw in our box that looks like this. And I literally just figured out where it goes. And it goes right here. Oh. So you guys might wanna watch for that. So that is the adapter that's used to function either the rudder or the steerable rudders on the floats, okay? Now, I also figured out how to open this hatch off camera when we were cleaning up, and I have to use my finger now, so I'm about done with that. <laughs> so I'm taking a piece of tape, pull this out, I'm gonna put the tape right here to the right of center, okay? I'm gonna fold this under. I'm gonna cut there and fold that under. And then I'm just gonna give myself a little bit of tail like that. And I'm gonna fold the tail before I press down. Now I'm pressing down. See the order of operations, hopefully will help you get that in there. Then this folds in and down and then out easy, okay? Remember, <clears throat> this only turns one way, it stops there, but they've left a sweep unpainted. So from the top, they've left the sweep unpainted all the way around, so I thought you could turn it either way. You can only turn it this way. And that's the rationalization for this, okay? So that makes it a lot easier. Although I'm just noticing that this tape is not wanting to stick because of mold release probably. So I'm just gonna take a little bit bigger piece of tape What? What do you want? <sighs> That's our Tomcat. His name is Ash. He's uh, the dumbest of the group, but mm -hmm. he's also the nicest. So we'll let him interrupt our filming. <laughs> <laughs> he's the only person in our family who could do that and yes, get away with it, yes. which is funny. <laughs> All right, so, <clears throat> and by the way, if you guys don't know this, we're dog people and we have three cats. So when, when you get cats and you're a dog person, it's just different situation for you. Yes. Because there's a distinct difference between cat people and dog people. I, I know this from experience. You like the cats. I like you the cats. Okay, so this is the tail system. Okay. 
and again, pretty nice soft tire on it. Very detailed, looks, looks delicate though. So guys, on Brian Phillips RC, what we like to do is we like to show it the way it is and not necessarily make up your mind for you. I know it doesn't seem that way when I really, really, really like a plane, but the truth is we understand everybody has different tastes and there's a million different reasons why you might be buying a particular plane. So we wanna help you make good decisions by showing you details in true color. Okay, so we're gonna go back to the page that shows this. Okay, I couldn't quite tell which direction it goes. So they've given us a bunch of uh, M2.5 by eight, and it looks like the longer portion goes forward. So now if we look at these sacks, Han, if you could handle my sacks there, that'd be mm -hmm. great. Sure, they're kind of small. Thank you. I like to think of them as efficient. <laughs> well, that's true. So M3, so, M2.5. Hey, it's labeled. Is it right? Okay. Well, I don't know. It's not like I built this thing before. It's obviously, <laughs> the sack is untouched. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna dump this out. <clears throat> this is gonna be a pretty straightforward operation, folks. But I gotta say, this is one of the areas where RC has come full circle, or not full circle, but uh, three quarters of the way circle. And that is that this type of assembly is almost never expected of us anymore. So some of you might be thinking, well, I don't wanna do that. Well, that's fine. Then this plane's probably not for you. But the truth is, I don't think it's that big a deal. And I would highly suggest you put these in first, but they're gonna go into the outside hole. The inside hole is for something else later. I believe you can leave this on when you put floats on if you want and you can tie your strings here if you want to, or you can tie them there. It really doesn't matter, I don't think. I'm glad I found that screw when I did. Yeah. That was like literally, we were getting ready to start the camera and I'm like, oh, I figured it out. And I'm glad we found it in the box because it was when I was like collapsing it. Yeah. It fell out of the corner. I'm just tightening this screw like a little teeny bit just to give some friction. These things, in my experience are notoriously bad for backing off over time. So maybe not like a huge fan of the style of connector, but you know, <clears throat> again, this is one of those areas where we've had um, pretty sizable improvement in the build quality of models. It's not like this is a low quality option. It's actually an expensive option. <clears throat> but the thing about it is that these screws, because you turn a screw to tighten it, and then there's a pivot, over time, my feeling is that they eventually will loosen, no matter how good of a job you do flying and that sort of thing. So, just my two cents. Anyway, that being said, as we do these builds, we hope that you'll get some value out of them, because really, at the end of the day, you know, most of this stuff is not really rocket science. You could probably figure it out without our help. But then when it comes to the radio setup and things like that, that's where we really kind of shine, I think, where we bring uh, some additional value in terms of assembling parts based on instruction manuals. It's not that big a deal. That doesn't appear to be biting anything. Like nothing. That is, is it? That is so weird. I don't know, I can't tell. Okay, loosening that, loosening this, making it square. <clears throat> This is gonna have to get adjusted. I'm 100% certain of it, okay? So I'm not even really gonna like spend too much time trying to center it. But I don't feel like I'm biting anything on this screw. It feels like it's just, you know, if anything, we're getting a superficial connection there. There's definitely some threads touching, but you see how it's pushing in? See how it's falling in? Mm -hmm. There ain't no way that's gonna hold, okay. What is, why do you suppose they gave us M3 T12 tapping screws? What do you think those are for? In that same package? Mm-hmm. You know why I think they did? Why? They probably realized that these screws were like a little bit too small or something weird about the way that the plane was built. So watch this, guys. That is 100% not gonna stay put. And so I'm gonna, yeah, you see, I can just lift it up. That's definitely not gonna work. So I'm gonna try one of those other bigger screws. Okay. <coughs> Excuse six, the yakking. 
Megan and I are both sick. There's six of them. We're getting better though. There's six of them? Yeah. Well, they almost certainly are for floats, I bet then. Well, let me keep looking while you're just unscrewing that. Okay. Yeah, so in advance, guys, we're sorry for coughing because we both are getting over colds. And uh, that's just the way of life. 12, three by 12, I'm not seeing anywhere. Three by 16, but yeah, that's well, not I'm gonna the tell you where screw. they go. I'm gonna tell you where they go here in a second. Okie dokie. I'm pretty sure it's gonna go in this hole right in front of your very eyes. And it's gonna be a perfect fit. Watch, four steps to the rescue again. Because I couldn't quite get that pulled out of the tip. Okay. That's exactly what I meant to do, is shoot it on the ground in a random spot. I see it. Okay, thank you. I'm just gonna use one of these and see if it goes. And if it goes fine, then we'll know. Oh, that's probably, yeah, you don't wanna use your, you wanna use your Phillips screw for that, <laughs> generally speaking. It's a lot bigger screw. That is a lot bigger screw. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. I mean, it's worth a shot. Oh yeah, yeah, that's gonna, I just want to see inside before I get too far ahead of myself. Because there's basically, there's a point where a screw is coming through and there's the other point where the screw is supposed to come through, right there, mm -hmm. okay? And there's a wire that goes back here. Is there a light right there? Ha, huh, there's a light. You can barely see it though. That's so cool. Oh. I didn't know there was a light back oh, there. Let me see. It. Huh, okay. How do you get the tweezers out to find that one, hon? <laughs> I almost feel like, are we supposed to already have the horizontal and vertical stabilizer on? No, no, no okay, I was just like thinking maybe that's where, that's where the plastic would be. <clears throat> hmm, I need a bigger screwdriver tip. Does it feel like it's going in though? We'll see. It's going, it's just, I don't want it to protrude too much through the top. And to be honest, folks, I don't usually use the wrong size screw like this, but this is going to be a critical member. Like, mm -hmm. it kind of needs to be right. That's disappointing. But what are you going to do? When you build an airplane, sometimes you got to step it up a notch and switch the screws. So as you can see, that's now assembled. Okay, okay so now next move for me, I'm thinking is going to be... Uh, what are we gonna do next? They're talking about floats next, so obviously we're not gonna be doing floats right now. They had the gear on also, if you wanted to put Oh, the, the, main, the front the main first, gear? Yep. That's where they're gonna be used, I bet. Nope, that's number two Phillips screwdriver, M316. No, this is 12. That's 12, that's M3. By 12. M3, that's the size that holds the mains on. Did you catch that now? No. Are you still right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, I just wanted to make sure we were on the same page. Okay, so maybe we'll get lucky when we use that small screw somewhere. But these are clearly for the main landing gear, okay? But worst case scenario, RTL fasteners to the rescue. But for now, we're just gonna try to do this. Uh, the five, five millimeter, because we all know we size our Phillips tips. Yes. An English standard with a metric. Yes. Well, it's actually technically not an English standard, I guess, because you could say the Phillips tip is, they have a Japanese Phillips tip too, so. But then that's technically a different standard. Okay, so we'll just start this out and uh, see if this goes. Am I supposed to be putting the, the wing strut on there too? Where do they say to put the screws? It just goes in there. There's nothing else assembled yet on it. Oh, okay. Well, the wing strut looks like it probably goes through there. That is a really tight fit too, by the way. I gotta say, like That's really tight. It says to use a 12, not a 16. What are or these? a 16. These are 12s. Megan, those are 12s. What are they saying? 16. M three sixteen. Yeah. Oh crap, so that isn't the ones. <laughs> so I was actually right? Well, M3 is the size that speaks to the shaft size. Right. The 12 is just 12 millimeters long. So you're saying there is a different one. So we're supposed to use 16s, huh? Apparently. Where the heck are the 16s? I don't know. Uh, like I said, we've come a long way in aircraft. Here's M310, M2.5 by eight, M3 by 22.
M2 by 6. I don't see anything else. How many screws do you need for this? Okay, so these are, these are it. We don't have anything that size. So as per typical instruction manuals from RC manufacturers, they kind of are wrong and yet we're supposed to figure it out. That's why we have Brian Phillips RC, I guess. So that Brian will help you figure it out, maybe. Or we'll just perpetuate what was wrong before anyway. So the reason they went from that length to this length probably had to do with unnecessary amounts of penetration. I don't know if they're going to be able to hear him, but he's pretty annoying. Okay, so this plane stand is not giving me enough to hold on to. So I'm kind of pressing hard. So as a result, I've decided to reach around here and hold it. Okay, so that's in all the way. I have a really hard time believing we're not going to also be putting. Look at this, guys. How often does that happen when you're screwing? It comes loose. I guess I'm gonna have to use my toolkit to fix my toolkit before I can continue using my toolkit. <laughs> Goodness gracious, nothing's ever as easy as it should be. It is kind of nice that you can take that out because then I can chuck that into a drill if I wanted. But, you know, I'm not thinking about that all night. Like, like I really wish I could chuck I this really into a drill. I really wish my screwdrivers came apart so I could put them in my drill. Well, these have been pretty nice screwdrivers. They have. This was a gift from one of our loyal subscribers. Mm -hmm. Actually, like most of the tools we use on this channel have yeah. been gifts from people get tired of watching They get tired struggle. of me like ruin my wife's Afghans with P51s. Okay, so in typical beaver fashion, we are gonna go ahead and do the other side now. We have a total of now five of these screws, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I will go ahead and probably whip out the RTL fasteners kit. Now that we've used everything, I need to size the next one. So it's an M312. I'm gonna dig. You can just give me a second, I'll find it. I do. This has actually got a different style of head. It's called, this is called a number four, one half inch washer head self-tapping, okay? So that's the part number if you're trying to buy them from RTL fasteners. If you do buy from RTL fasteners, we have a like Brian 10 or something like that. There's a link. There's a link in the video description. But anyway, we'll see if this works. Um, we understand that the kits are kind of what save the day. So this kit is a kit that has a bunch of grub screws and stuff like that. It's actually three kits. And you can kind of see this is one kit, this is one kit, and this is one kit. Okay. And that's why we show this stuff is because we have yet to be without a piece of hardware so far. Mm -hmm. And we have had lots of crashes and lots of shortings um, <clears throat> of equipment. But then we also use a metric and a standard kit here. So these are the two ones that we usually would point out. But we didn't have the right size screw. This one's the closest. You can see up here by my pinky. Those ones are the one I was thinking would work. But they ended up being too small for shaft size. So I just want to let you know. Now, the other thing is, if you just save everything all the time, you'll you always have something. Have what you need. Okay, so that was weird because we said the opposite <laughs> thing at the same time. But uh, if you're anything like me, you probably save everything all the time anyway. So if you do that, then each time you move to a new house or apartment or whatever, then you'll probably have to pay college students to pick up your garbage at the street like we did. And then you'll have to fill all of your friends' cars with planes. So listen, when we moved to this house, oh crap, I went into the foam and not the whole son of a biscuit. Oh, thank goodness it's covered up. Don't do that. Show them a close up. You see this? I missed the hole oh. and I hit the soft spot next to it. That's never good. No, it's not. So I'm going to, okay, there I, I got it now. So now I'm gonna show you if this one works. And honestly, it'd be better down there, but I guess whatever, we'll put it here and make it work. Now keep in mind, the thread pitch is not exactly the same on here. And so it is possible that this would maybe not go, but I think, I think it's probably going to go. 
because that is an English standard and everything else has got an M metric standard, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it's actually gonna give us the amount of penetration we need to get the job done. Remember, these are your main landing gear. They are sort of important to the overall uh, landing characteristics and survivability of the plane. If your landing gear are not properly attached to your plane, it's generally a bad, bad thing. Bad thing. Yeah. I mean, it kind of depends on if you want to land or not. Okay, now I'm going to have to say something. I hate to backpedal, but I don't feel like that's biting and I'm going to have to figure out why. We'll be right back. Okay, so this one, I tried to push it in and I don't know, I can tell it's not there, but I didn't want to totally take this off, but then I can't see it penetrating through to the other side. So my guess is the this less deep pocket might be a better place for it if I have to use it. Again, in this case, I'm just grabbing another smaller screwdriver, just something I can slide into the, the outlet side of it and push that screw back out. Because the head of it is just slightly bigger, that's speaking to the washer port part. I wanna just see if I can even get this in here. Yeah, see, that's gonna work pretty dang good. It's just that the depth of the foam here was catching me off guard. So unfortunately, I'll just have to flip those around. Shouldn't be like a huge deal, but if you guys end up in that same predicament. Now, keep in mind, the only reason we did that is because the tail, uh, the tail assembly needed the additional effort. Yeah, that's going perfect. Okay, good. Now be careful you don't slip your screwdriver out and then damage your phone like I did there. I'm usually a pretty careful person, but goodness gracious, sometimes on these planes, it's very, very easy to do that. And I gotta say, this is like one of the things that, you know, if you're looking at this on the side of the box, you're not gonna be able to tell mm -hmm. from looking at the side of the box. That's why you watch a video like, like this. And that's why we have thousands of videos from Brian Phillips RC. Because when you're going to make a decision, you wanna be able to size up a piece of equipment before you make the purchase. Now, to be honest with you, this particular plane and the Sea Wind are pretty economical planes for what you're getting. And so far, I'd say that's pretty sweet looking. <coughs> Not an especially difficult build so far, just more along the lines of some annoying difficulties. Not a big deal. All right, continuing onward, we have a tail, horizontal stabilizer, and then we have the vertical stabilizer and rudder. Um, this is gonna snap in, <clears throat> I just wanna show this while it's easy to see, into that thing, okay? So you can kinda see, we'll just simulate this real quick. So we don't need to do much with it. But that's just gonna drop in there and then make that mechanical linkage so that it can actuate our rudder for us. Oh. Pretty sweet, but then this is gonna be a pain in the butt, I can already tell. Um, do you see what's going on there? Where? Look. Go to the other side, please. Oh. Right here. <coughs> All right, so this we're gonna have to lift up. And this reminds me, didn't we have to do this on like the F-14 or something? There was some weird spot. So you have to turn it sideways, slide it in, and then like do one of these things. It's not like the end of the world. Are they saying we have to release it on the actual servo mount? That's what I don't know. Yeah, we have to put those vertical things on first too. Let's do that. Okay. These vertical things here go in like this. They should be ambidextrous though, like that. Okay. And same thing on the other side, but we have to actually use some screws to mount those. So let's see what type of screws we need, camera crew. Back at the manual. M2 by six. M2 by six, they're inside this bag. Okay. I put them in there thinking that they were gonna be for the floats because that's the way they came out of the box, not because there was some specific instruction in that regard. M2 by six? Mm-hmm. Four pieces, four okay. That makes sense, yep. okay. All right, so I'm just gonna put those here on our in invisible counter, or our invisible making hardware counter. If you guys have a counter like this, we feel your pain, folks. 
I'm gonna go down to a smaller screwdriver tip. Okay, so a real small screwdriver. I'm gonna bring it in here and just uh, see if I can get these to go in. Oh yeah, pretty easy stuff. So it's nice that it's serviceable, but it's also, <clears throat> this is the type of thing that, you know, little screws and stuff all over the place are sort of something that we've gotten away from um, or the manufacturer does it. But this makes the fin, this makes the horizontal stabilizer way bigger to ship. So with regard to shipping, we didn't talk much about the damage on the, uh, the float, but we're going to have to, we're going to have to mention that to the guys at the factory mm -hmm. and just be like, Hey, you know, you got to figure out how to keep those things away from each other. Cause I think right now what's going on is they just don't have, I switched screwdrivers thinking this would be better and maybe I'm going to kick myself. Sorry. You're going to have to like move when I switch. Yeah. Awkward I mean, spot. It's, I know it's awkward. I'm going back down to the three millimeter. <clears throat> Son of a biscuit. This reminds me of the screws on the Carbon Z Cub. They, they're way worse than this because these actually go. The, that, was, that is like the only thing I don't like about that plane is the screws yeah. when you go to take the tires off. Or was it the tires and floats? I can't remember, but they were terrible. There was like this Phillips the size tires. that was like a weird like in, in between size. So like nothing would really stay in the, the screw. And it was just like enough to drive you insane. <coughs> so folks, if you're new to the channel, this is what we do here on the channels. We build planes, we set them up with uh, a radio and we show you start to finish. You can kind of see and gauge how much effort it is and then what kind of quality you can expect. Uh, one of the things we've been doing for years is filming the entire unbox and build process. And most of the, most of our peers on YouTube have kind of gotten away from that where they just, they just show the flights and all that. And I mean, there's definitely some value there. Don't get me wrong. We do that too. Uh, but we, we firmly believe that one of the hardest things to do when you're out picking a plane is determining how difficult a build is going to be and what type of equipment's needed and all that good stuff. And you know, if there's some special skill required, that's why we do it. Not because we're gluttons for punishment. Oh. But we are, just to be clear. Okay, so as you can see, so now I need to try to figure out how the heck to get this in. Now, which hole do I go into? <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, jeez, the bottom hole. Okay, so the bottom hole, can you imagine having to take this off every time? What a joke. Well, you would not. You don't need to move every time. I just okay. have to get the tools. Okay, so I've got this turned sideways. You guys see that? Because that's a sideways adapter. How the heck is that going to work? Like, isn't it going to need to be the other way? Oh, crap. That thing is loose. Is it supposed to be loose? It's not even hooked up. See, it's not even hooked up to the elevator. That's on purpose, I'm sure, because they figure that most people are not gonna be able to do that otherwise. That's why they did that, okay? Okay, well, at least that'll make this a little easier. So now that's gonna get folded flat, right? I'm sorry, I cannot move. I know, it's... You're gonna have to figure out the angle because I can't change what I'm doing. Okay, you guys see what I did there? Now it's gonna be flat sideways like that. And as I slide this in, that's literally all there is to it. I mean, it's, it's just that simple. <laughs> okay, so now we've got that squared away. Now, I, I'm not saying that we know where the elevator is right now. <clears throat> and so I just wanna point this out before we do this. This is not gonna be centering the elevator, but you see where the elevator is? Mm -hmm. So you're gonna need to be using some good judgment before you actually land that, okay, folks? Because if you try to land that right now, your servo is probably not centered. So if you decide to plug it into something like your XBC battery checker, like this, then you can center the servo. But remember, centering the servo is only as good as the mechanism 
that it's on, okay? It really has to do more with how it's going to be um, spatially with the plane. Like we don't know if that servo needs to be centered exactly or if the spline location is off by like half a tooth, which is like every freaking plane you'll ever build, just so you know. So I would suggest that you don't even worry about that yet. You're gonna have to come back to it, okay? So now I've got that pushed forward and that's gonna gain us access to where we can stick this now down. And then I believe there's some screws that are gonna come up from the bottom, right? Let's check the instruction manual to verify. Yep, then the screws go in there, the M3 by 22, okay. okay. So this slides in like this and then down, well, not down, just in flush. Okay, now just trying to get that all the way lined up. Very good, not bad at all, not bad at all. And then just push that down till you have it flush along the seam line there. Hmm. Some of these things just come together guys and you're like, how is this gonna work? And then it works. Now there's an access hole here. I want you guys to look at that access hole there. Okay, we're looking for M3 by 22 millimeters long, okay? M3 by 22, it's in this bag. Uh, no, it's not. I saw it earlier. <clears throat> yeah, I thought you read it earlier. <clears throat> Excuse me again. M3 by 22. There's one. M3 by 22 in this bag, whatever's in this stuff here. Okay, a lot of different hardware bags. Kind of just strange to have so many different, what is that? Is that like really empty? Are we supposed to use that for something? I don't know. Well, sort of makes me nervous. It's like they probably had something in there at one point and I, I must have. Did we repack that, Megan? I don't think so. I'm gonna put these out of the way because those are definitely for the floats, okay? Right. Now we will eventually do floats, folks, because we're literally building a pond like upon our return from Alabama. Okay, that's it. It was hiding behind the label. Good. So here it is, guys. Good job with the labels. One suggestion, okay? If you're a manufacturer that's manufacturing parts and you're counting out screws, either put them all in their individual bags, I don't care if you have one screw, mm -hmm. or put them all in one bag and be done with it. I work in manufacturing, I have evidence for the reason to call this out. I sell systems that help people do this crap for a living. Okay. Where did my screwdriver go? I don't know. I put it back. Here it is. Okay, so I'm gonna, yeah, that feels pretty good. Four millimeters. If that doesn't go through there. That's not gonna go through there. If that doesn't go through there, I am going to flip a lid. Ha ha, it went through there. Still, now remember guys, I gotta say something, and I know some of you are gonna laugh when I say it, but we built a lot of dynams in our day. <laughs> and I can tell you something, we never had anything line up on a dynam. So like the fact that everything so far, except for one screw has been right, yeah. is almost a miracle because the tolerances on all of those moves right there were ridiculous. And I gotta add to that, when the expectation is that ridiculous tolerances are going to be maintained, the possibility of complete and utter failure is much higher. <laughs> now that's not to say that there's complete and utter failure because look, our piece count's gone from yeah. 30 bags to airplane wings. Which by the way, I gotta come back to this. We talked about this the other day. What a weird design. We've got two carbon fiber rods on this wing and we have one on this wing. What the heck is going on with that? Okay, so now let's talk about linkages. We can get to that linkage probably right now. We can also get to this light controller that's just flopped in here and put that up to the front. Show them through the windshield. 
See this light controller through the tinted windows? Mm -hmm. If this plane got pulled over by the police, they would probably get a ticket. <laughs> okay, so that's pushed forward. Because remember, that's where you can get to these wires. Because like, whoever designed this plane did not have hands. They, they were like <laughs> Edward forcep fingers. <laughs> what the heck were they thinking? Like, you can't even get into this anywhere. Um, okay. okay. Let's just see Edward forcep fingers. I kind of like that. Let's see, now that we've learned how to open this, pull that over, open it up. I just want to make sure I can get all my wires out, you know, because like this is not the most spacious setup we've ever seen in the history of airplanes that we've worked with. The ESC is mounted here. It's a 40 amp. Looks like I got an EC3 on there, so that's good. Thank God we've gotten away from EC3 connectors on batteries. Oh my goodness, they were terrible. Um, I see are so much better and it's so weird because they're dimensionally like almost exactly the same and yet they're like night and day better. Oh, and there's Velcro here for a receiver. Okay. So obviously the person that put the Velcro there was assuming you'd use a non-stabilized receiver. And that has to do with the fact that they were not readily available, uh, back the first time they released this plane is my understanding. Okay. So now I'm going to do something that I don't normally do. And that is gonna to be to preemptively use one zip tie to hold all this crap together. Cause I'm just, I'm having visions. Visions of pain and suffering. The pain and suffering, small children hungry in a village with flies going around them. No, it was just me trying to fish all the wires back to this spot. No Sally Struthers was involved. How old are you? million years old. I know most of the people watching this probably get that. That's our audience. You have to remember there's a bunch of me watching this. <laughs> That's scary. <sighs> okay, move that way. Thank you. Okay, so our next move is, our next move is we have to put these wings on. So the reason I did that was because I am trying to use my brain to think ahead like five steps. And the reason I'm thinking ahead five steps is because I'm thinking I'm the poor schlub that's going to have to actually route all this crap down to the bottom again. And you guys are going to have to watch me do it and not swear. Do, can I do that? Oh, you get to, <laughs> the swear or the do it? <laughs> the swear. Okay. Yes, I have to watch you. I actually it. don't technically need that plane stand right now, but I think I might use it just to hold the tail up. Oh, by the way, when you are filming these things for YouTube and their openings that are this big and your hands that are... Yeah, that big. Sorry, it does make it kind of hard. So our apologies uh, in advance. Now we were talking earlier about this linkage here. Now you're going to have to get real creative on this air cam crew. Okay, so I'm just going to show you. This is obviously for the elevator. So look at the elevator. Now show me moving it. So like maybe all at the same time. There you go. Okay, now watch. I'm going to stick this in the hole. Oh yeah. Okay, now what did I do? I'm going to let go of that, <clears throat> and then I'm going to grab a screwdriver. A really long crappy one this time and I'm just gonna tighten it <clears throat> I'm just gonna tighten it guys now the good thing is this comes off notwithstanding the wing but just keep in mind there's gonna be all this crap in the way of that opening in that there wow mm. that is gonna be terrible to work on that elevator because just think about it once we get this all hooked up I'm gonna loosen this again okay look at where the elevator is that looks pretty level, doesn't it? Yeah. Mm, yes. Okay, so now I've tightened it. So I was thinking I would just leave it totally like, you know, wherever it was. But then I got to thinking, oh man, you're gonna have both of these going through. You're gonna have three both of these of going through. Oh, it's gonna be nuts. All right, so now it's time. Speaking hey, of nuts. It's not, it's not time, because somebody read the directions. You're supposed to put these little like clippy doohickeys on before you put the wings, these thingies. You're right? kidding me? They couldn't have done that at the factory? No. Oh my goodness. Edward Forsett fingers can't do that part. I feel like the other wing is supposed to have them. Wait, 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 wait. Wait a second. Wait, wait, wait. It, you have to put them on the plane on one side and on the wing on the other. See? How do I tell which side I'm looking at? That would be, how many are there? 
Four. But hold on. Did they mirror that image? Because that shows. Okay, so now these don't mount to the wings, they go to the fuse, okay? And we're supposed to use M310s to hold them on. So we have M310s here. Okay. All right, so here goes nothing. Not to be confused with whatever these are for whatever they're gonna be used for. All right, so M310s and then for these clip doohickeys. And then the bags that are done are going here. Okay. I don't even know what those are now. And then this is the one that we got <clears throat> that didn't work for the, uh, the steerable tail wheel, okay? So that one's probably not gonna get used. And then there's a whole bag of goodies there, okay? These clips are going down right, correct? Yes, down, like this. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, maybe their rationalization was like, hey, if somebody breaks something, gosh, those, that tape, that tape is so ugly. I should probably just take that off. It looks bad. Yeah. But you see what I'm talking about there? That is gonna go in there. Five millimeters, I think is what we need. Oh yeah, well, yeah, that's probably about right. So then if you were to crash or something and have a wing get broken off, then maybe this clip would save the day. I'm not really sure. Oh, that's gonna clip on. So then you'll be able to press in and release. So if that were to break, then it gives some level of serviceability. Is that maybe why they're doing that? I don't, know. I don't know. I'm really scraping the bottom here trying to cover for <laughs> you, you guys at, at Tower. This is a pretty bad move. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, this this is pretty much uh this is pretty much like one of those weird things that we just don't see anymore. Yeah. Okay. Because like there's there's really if you're if you're paying for somebody to build you a plastic molded piece like this, then you just have them mold these in as well. Like there's really zero rationalization for doing it any other way. And it's not like a quick release because you have 27 things going through the wing. Yeah, I know. You got to like line up seven things to stick into seven holes all at the same time. <laughs> and then push the button to release it. Two buttons. Two buttons. Well, a pulling out is different than pushing in. When you're pushing in, you got to line all the tips up. And they're at different lengths, by the way. Yeah. Look, one, two, three, four, five. So five, not seven. I like to exaggerate for dramatic effect. <laughs> Tell the people about this, Megan. You've never exaggerated ever in your whole life. <sighs> Thank you. Okay, so admittedly, that would have made the fuse bigger, but the way they packed this, like it, it wouldn't, wouldn't have, mattered. have mattered. Okay, so anyway, sorry guys. Sometimes the uh, professional, <clears throat> I, I work in this, type of environment. It's just, when I see stuff like that, I just think that doesn't make sense. That clip wanted to be this way. This one's kind of fighting me when I try to turn the screw, but it's okay. Now I want to point out one other thing. Look at the nature of those planes. Yeah, they're, they're, they're like not, not level. Yeah. And that means it's the shape of the bottom of the wing. It's got like a smiley face to it, okay? Oh. So I point that out because I don't want you to think it's a mistake because these are keyed. They are not allowed to spin. All right, so these two wires have to be forced through a relatively tight hole. In fact, we're gonna pause and come right back. All right, so this is what I thought we were doing next when we were tying up those wires underneath. Um, but now that we're feeding these through, I'm, I was trying to do two at once, it's just not gonna happen. So this pocket is not a straight through shot. It's got a bend in it and it goes downhill, okay? So then it shoots into like the pilot's lap, okay? Then I'm gonna take the second one. And yes, you do wanna start with the light controller cause it's got a male end on it that, you know, so there's like three pins there. They're gonna be fighting you. And remember at some point you gotta get these things inserted. Okay, and then pass this little wire through the doohickey hole. Goodness gracious. If you have to take this plane apart to transport it, 
I'm just going to let you make up your own mind, guys. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Just think on that. Oh, boy. This is so weird. Okay, now I'm going to actually stick this through my flap adapter because right now, like, there's no way... I'm going to be able to get that through otherwise. So I have to use forceps in my left hand. Just to be clear, I'm right-handed. So if it looks like I'm drunk a little bit, that's because I'm not left-handed. Okay. Oh, Jesus, it makes me nervous. And then oh, are you trying man. to get them through the holes on the other side? <clears throat> oh, am I? I don't, are you? I'm Ooh, asking. I didn't even think. I, oh, am I? Yeah. Are you kidding me? No, I just noticed. I am so embarrassed. Guys, did you see what camera crew caught that I missed? You have to go into those holes down there and I totally wasn't even thinking about it because I was worried about penetration on these clips. Oh man, I'm pressing really hard. This is making me nervous. Son of a biscuit. Now I'm like afraid I'm doing this wrong. Well, I want to start. Oh, there it is. That is not a fun penetration right there. Oop, 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 we're there! Oh man. That was ridiculous. Okay, so we're in. That plane was easy to build. It was, it was like six Like zero, zero problems. We had like way more, we were talking about it off camera, like do we have enough time to get this video done? And it's so funny because we usually gauge the difficulty by how I try to trick her into thinking it's going to be quick. Right. Which it never is. But it's never really quick, but it's like sometimes it's a lot quicker than yeah. others. And it's so weird because some of the planes that you think would be so easy turn out to be extremely difficult or hard for stupid reasons. And uh, I mean, it's not like insurmountable or anything like that. If you guys are in the hobby and you think this is hard, you're probably in the wrong hobby. But the truth is... This plane, it's just got some weird build things to it. Well, and we just have a different tolerance for building than if you were just building it sitting here at the island. Oh Why yeah, if you were just sitting here, playing maybe and... with a beverage and hanging out with the family, it becomes like a really fun, positive experience. But for me and Megan, you know, there's snide remarks going in the background all the time. This is like our date night. This, this is a date <laughs> night? It's sun's yeah, out, it's this sun's is right weird. <laughs> You're aging us big time. But no, seriously though, it's just, it's just a different environment for us. Oh, I grabbed the wrong wire, hon. What the heck is going on here? I'm trying to get those two wires to fall down here. Okay, remember how I tied all these together, guys? That's why I did that. But then there's two wires and I'm trying to figure out how to reach them. And again, my apologies because of the nature of the size of this aircraft. There we go, I got one. Okay, there's one. And I swear I've got the other one, but do I have... You can see it. I do, but I keep yeah. grabbing the wrong half of it. So I gotta grab the half that goes toward the pilot. There it is, there it is. Come on now. There it is, woo! All right, you see what I did there? Oh my goodness, what a pain. Okay, so cable management 101. Take, take your time and do it nicely, just like Brian does. I'm gonna lay this down so it balances because the wing is vertical. And then I'm just, I'm sorry, I'm doing another, I'm oh, doing another that. haphazard method that I don't oh. often do. I'm gonna tape this. Okay. Do you know why I'm taping it? Yeah, so they don't fall back in there. Yeah, but do you know why I'm taping it instead of doing it better? Because the zip ties are four more feet away. Yes. And well, this is gonna work just as good because it's only gonna like be a minute. Yeah. Or 17. Yeah, a minute. <laughs> See how I tried to be truthful? See where that got me? Okay, so we're just gonna lay this down here, okay? We've gained a part. <laughs> All right, so now the same process for this wing, except there's actually less things to stick in. But you gotta line them all up. <sighs> I know, I know, it's so awkward. This is why I usually have you do this step. <laughs> Okay, you guys see what I'm talking about here? I've got these two. So they have to go into the same pocket. Go over my left shoulder. Show them inside the hole. 
see this? I'm sliding it in the hole. And it's like, it's, it's not an especially easy thing to do just because of the nature of the shape of the hole. There it goes. And yes, you could, you could put a pull rod through there. It's no big deal. Again, it's like when you're printing a manual to sell a bunch of stuff, then, you know, you're like, oh, it's easy. Look how simple that was. 15 minutes. Boy, we've engineered it well. Well, when you're the guy that's like here to point out all the mistakes that they made, then it's just really easy. It's not a mistake at all. It's just kind of a weirdity. Okay, there's the second one. Okay, now this is what I was talking earlier about the elevator. Look at those rods in the way. Okay, that's what I'm saying. You're gonna have three of those. The access hatch is gonna be like almost not an access, not hatch. An access hatch. That's why we're concerned about getting those wires down one set at a time. This, you know what this reminds me of? This plane, and this is better than that plane. There was a Cessna 182 from FMS that was terrible the like blue this. One? Yes. yes. The sky trainer. Oh my goodness. That, that was, was so weird. terrible. They had like an HVAC duct that you had to put all the wires through. Yeah. And <clears throat> I mean, it was just, I still have nightmares about it to this day. It's not that bad, guys. I'm just being a smarty. Smarty, smart Alec. This is so strange. Okay, so cam crew, I think you're on the wrong side to show the people what I'm trying to do here. So I want you over here now. I'm gonna get my forceps in my hand because I gotta guide the that flap rod. Oh, again, this is why we now have, <clears throat> and, and why did we do this, everybody? To save the cost of one flap servo. But you're... Yes, <sighs> Megan, yes. Seriously, that's, that's like to save the cost of one flap servo, right? Uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, because think about yeah, it. A like little why, wire. What are you talking about? They would have wires built into them. You need to call China and talk to them. Okay, I'll do that. China, is this China? Hello, China. China, is this China? I need two, two servos. Oh no, the price is ridiculous. <laughs> We're gonna put a linkage through the wing. <laughs> it's okay, Never mind. I'll take half my order. Is that how that goes? Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> All right, here it is. Oh yes, we're in it to win it now, folks. Don't you know, don't you know. All right, we're just gonna guide this in. <clears throat> Maybe that's why they're blocking our links. What? Like we're not gonna support that guy. Not when he talks about China that way. It's just it's it like all the crap we do is made in China. Like almost all of it. Yeah, literally, 100%. They need something to ship back after they buy billions of pounds of soybeans. Yeah. And corn from my neighbor. Yeah, see, over there. It's that's over there. That's, that's corn. corn. Um, all right, so just to be clear, that's so weird. The wing is straight as an arrow but the tail's not. Stand here and show them. Oh my goodness. Oh. Do you see it? Mm -hmm. Eek. I don't know what we're gonna do to fix that though. I don't either. And I was looking at the way the carbon fiber tubes come through. You remember how we were talking about the obnoxiously angled carbon fibers? Look at these. They're at an angle. Yeah. So it's like they were planning on a dihedral, but then like somebody got fired because they said, no, 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 no. The beaver doesn't look like this. It's got a flat wing. And they're like, well, we don't have to redesign that. We'll just redesign the plastic that has the clips and the screws. So are those wings only held on by those clips? The answer to your question is there's carbon fiber and air. <laughs> air. Oh, okay. Well, now there's air. <clears throat> No, I like, honestly, I don't know that there's really a way I could twist the fuse, maybe. Eh, no, not gonna do that. I could try to push this down. No, not gonna do that. Try to pull that up. It's not that far off. I don't think it's like the end of the world, but it's still annoying. <laughs> okay, so we have the wings in and no, they're not pulled in tight. No, I know. That's there's like a gap. So yeah. I'm trying, I'm just trying to figure out if I missed something here, folks because there's a gap here. And then if you look, the horizontal length of the wing is not square, not perfectly. Let's say there's a two or three degrees disparity 
on the horizontal stabilizer from the main wing. I just, I, you know, and the other thing is, it could also be just there is a very, very minor dihedral to it. Is there a little bit of dihedral on this wing? I can't tell. I mean, it looks it really good. I mean, if you didn't know how it went together. I'm and just concerned about the gap between the wings. The gap the between the wings is just to store things. Like paper. <laughs> paper. If you have like a ream of paper, you can throw it in <laughs> yeah, there. Exactly. Um, if you get into your real beaver and it looks like this, you might want to run. Yeah. Go back to the dock, get Find in the dinghy. Point. Take the dinghy. Yeah. Um, all right. So that being said, now I get to figure out how to get these wires down here. Okay. So the wires. Yeah, that's not going to work. Is it? Mm, I can't see them from back here. Okay, now I'm going to take, put this back on the plane stand, sort of. Some planes, the body is designed to where, it's not designed for this purpose, but the, the design of the body results in the fact that um, the nose sticks up a little bit easier to access stuff like this, and then other times it's kind of the opposite direction. Just it depends on the, the plane that it's modeled after. Um, <clears throat> okay, fine. Did you get them? Yeah, I mean, they're all down here now. But it's kind of like, then of course there's like that one, they were like, oh, let's save three cents on this one wire. So then everything is limited to that length, which just annoys me. And it's like every freaking plane we've ever yeah. built. It's, so I can't complain about this plane because it's literally been every plane. <sighs> I don't want those to fall down. I'm gonna get one zip tie. I'll probably just tie it back together. Or wait, are we doing radio setup right now? Cause we still have other build stuff to do, don't we? we well, do we? I think It has we, wings and a tail. I think gear. we're just gonna use a big zip tie cause I want this temporarily held. Are yeah, you holding think, that? Yeah. That, that one nice. was wanting to fall. Did you get the other You're one welcome. too? No, it's already flopped over here. It's right here, it wasn't falling Well, if you out. could just hold it if it flops over, that'd be great. Okay. Kind of help just me hold it up. No, 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 keep holding it. Oh, yeah, right there. Okay, we're good. Okay, I need to get my side cutters. Jeez, side cutters. I need to, I need to trim some stuff. So, guys, if you're new to Brian Phillips RC, what you just witnessed was um, all too normal, <laughs> unfortunately. Unfortunately, for our lives. And this is this if you can get a woman that will tolerate you as a, as a, as a man that's wanting to get married or whatever that will tolerate you doing these things. Here's my suggestion. <laughs> Don't tell her at all about it at until all like until after you've been married years in. for a few years. <laughs> That's the safest way to live yes. through the circumstances. Um, if you've already been married for 20 plus years, then you, know, you don't wanna give her any ammunition. That's all I'm gonna say. So there is a period of time where you can get away with this and then after that, it's too late. So we have everything sticking out the bottom now. So now we can go ahead and get the wing struts on. Let's do that next. I assume that's next, oh. right? You remember how I was talking about the screws, how they were going to work together and all that? Yeah. yeah. That's what I was talking about. And they got like a bunch of rubber bands and stuff here. What the heck is all this crap? I don't know. Oh, it makes me nervous. Now the left wing. Okay. Okay. Here, wing struts, 2.5 by eight machine thread screw. 2.5 by 8. Ooh. Do we have those? What number? 2.5 by 8. Two pieces. Just two of them? Uh, you should need four. And then you got to take out the landing gear one, don't you? Which is in a 16. Megan, what I'm saying is, oh. It goes back here? That's weird. Okay, watch, watch me dumping my bolt sack out. Oh, yeah. There it is. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. So this one's the one that goes in the wing, right? Yes. Okay. Now, are these left and right? They are the same. Okay. Sometimes it's not as clear as you might think. I'm not as dumb as that comment just made me sound. I promise. I don't ever know how you figure any of that stuff out that fast. Because I don't do this for a living. I just film it. <laughs> no. So, so just to be clear, I was correct, right? Um, yeah, I, mean, I hate to say yes, because I was 100% correct. What the heck? Why didn't they say that in the manual when it mattered? Well, we didn't actually read it. We just like looked at the pictures. Yeah, I know. But if I go to McDonald's and I'm like, hey, give me that thing. 
and then it comes out and it looks nothing like it. You think, oh, I'm at McDonald's. Yeah. That seems about that right. That seems about right. And then, yeah, it was 20 bucks. <laughs> yeah. It used to be cheap at McDonald's. Good Lord. I don't know if you guys have noticed that or if I'm just that big of a cheapskate, but goodness gracious. If it would have been that expensive when I was young, I'd be a lot less fat now. Just saying. <laughs> okay, here it is. Yep, I was correct in my assessment. Okay. Here it is, guys. Okay. Don't worry, they labeled the left aileron, though. I noticed that on this And the way. left flap, so that you'll know which one's which. And you know what? They could have saved that whole system if they would have put another cover like that right here and run the flap, then you'd have one extra wire. Did you know that, camera crew? I mean, if I was China, that's what I would have done. This one's probably made in America at one point. Maybe. No, it wasn't. It was made in China. I'm sure it was. For, for all of you that made this in America, I apologize in advance for being wrong. These are float adapter points then, I take it? Yes. Okay. So there's like a total of three points on both sides that the struts come up to? That's probably what that whole other bag of screws that we haven't gotten into at all. That is probably just the float hardware. So you're thing. saying that's not for another airplane? Could be. You could put it in your, I'm gonna build a house out of my spare parts kit. I'm actually saving that. <laughs> you're gonna be living in it someday. Yes. You can just build it out of airplanes. That's actually a pretty awesome idea. All right. So now that one. Is your other little shorty that you put on the counter. The disappearing act on the counter. Where did it go? That is so weird. I swear it was just right here. Did I pick it up and yes, bring it over here? I see it. Put I have it right here. There you go. So guys, if you're uh, building a house and you currently run a YouTube channel where you build airplanes, you may want to think about using a white colored island. And oh, yes, like the color that I wanted, the color you wanted is the one that's in the bathroom. Now I'm still no, glad, I'm still glad we went with this. It would have been so white. No, I like this color a lot, it. except for when I'm looking for Screws. Gold colored screws in particular yeah. are like, yeah. they disappear. Sorry, it's dead. We had to quit the operation. It's, <laughs> you know, we don't know how to do that. Just kidding guys, we're gonna do that next. So that being said, as you can see, the access is uh, a little bit less accessible. And this thing, the reason it came in a bag is because that quite literally clips onto the wing spars. And that's about the time. That is pretty sweet looking, guys. It is hard to get past once you put this beaver together. It is. It's a nice looking beaver. It's nice to look at. I like looking at beavers. So, all right, cool. Now, we have a prop. We have some Velcro. We have the bottom access hatch. And then these things were in the box, but I, I don't think they actually were parts of the airplane. Uh, this came on the prop, the end of the output shaft from the motor just as a protective piece. So <coughs> we're gonna save those to insulate my RC ha house, right? Yeah, sir. Okay, just wanted to make sure. And then the rest of these screws, these are the bags that we emptied. Mm -hmm. These are the bags that we, we didn't. Now this was, should have been emptied. Yep. Okay. And then these ones are like, I don't know what that was. So this is what I'm gonna suggest you do, okay? Again, you, you don't ever have to follow my suggestions or advice. Um, I would put them in a bag like that and then I would take all this random crap here. Like, I don't even know what that stuff is. Even in case you want to go fishing from your float? Oh, no, that's, that's all the stuff for the floats, the linkages, because there's strings that go back and forth. The rubber bands are there to help in case you catch something, it won't break the servo. So it's like an overload thing. Oh, okay. And then they come with some stickers so you can omit those if you want or you can use them if you want. If it had end numbers, I would use end numbers, but the end numbers on this plane are on it. Already on it. And all joking aside, this foam, since it belongs to this particular plane, I'll probably put it in here so it can feel at home. We're all about keeping the families together here. 
Brian Phillips RC. Um, all right, so the other thing is we, we know that we're not gonna need these things, these, because it says remove plate, but it does not say to throw it away, so we'll keep those too, <laughs> obviously. Um, Thanks, China. That's right. And then these, we obviously need to keep. And these, this is the damage we're talking about. <coughs> um, it's worse than we've seen on most planes. Yeah. With regard to the way that it was packaged, because you can see this one looks almost perfect. So that's a bummer. Um, the good news is that happens to be the inside. Um, and that's the only good news, okay? Because to, to be honest, it's kind of inexcusably ugly, that damage. But it does look cool. They've even got the texture pads down there. Yeah. That's totally sweet. The Beaver's a big plane. If you guys didn't already know that, it's a pretty big plane. So I think it's quite a bit bigger than that one if I know my planes. So the next step in this process is probably going to be put in a radio. Radio. So we got to do radio setup or we could mount the prop. I'm sort of torn here because I know like 17 of you are going to get all bent out of shape if I put the prop well, on now. I'm wondering if we should wait just from a standpoint of like we both have to stand right there and film and work. We'll hold off on the prop. Just for ease of. We'll hold off on the prop, but not for safety reasons. No. It's not for only safety. It's only for convenience. For convenience and filming. Yeah. Okay, so I'm taking this spinner apart, taking out the two screws on the spinner, okay? I'll just take this um, front off, and then we'll be ready with the rest of that. Now, they, they put that together so we could take right. it apart, but, you know, I mean, <laughs> not the other 17 things we could have just left out of the plane altogether. The steps, I should say. Um, okay, so then in consideration of receivers. Now, they're going to talk about batteries in here i don't know that it's going to tell you much about the battery probably it's a why are they telling you to oh is that for the elevator oh this guy's got a float on there i was like why do they have a line across there okay yeah so they're talking about plugging in the aileron wires and all this crap that's all pretty obvious stuff okay more control, less control. That's how you measure if you want to measure. I never measure my planes. Uh, some of you guys are probably thinking that's a big miss on my part. Um, I just haven't ever done it because I don't think it's necessary. CD. Especially if you're using a, a stabilized receiver. They got some flying tips here. The Chinese have lots of good flying tips like Pack a lunch, yep. don't fly near hospitals or handicapped people. We've read all these things actually verbatim. Or around, what else? around boskage. Boskage, they're really yes. worried about boskage. Oh, there's the CG. Yeah, if you guys didn't know, boskage is a real word. We don't use it in, in the English speaking world much that I know of. Uh, nope, never. Are we marking the CG? What's the deal? We could, we're here, it's upside down. 51 to That's 64. Crazy. So just because it's upside down in here. Well, okay, all right. What, what are we marking? 51 to 64. All right, 51 to 64. If we edge. Okay, show me, show me. 51 to 64. 51 to 64. All right, so 51. 51 to 64. Guys, if you like watching this content, where do they measure from? See how this wing narrows at the, at the fuse? Where? From the leading edge, where shown? Where? Here. Oh, where they showed shown? it out here. Okay. So they're saying from the flat of the wing, not from the inboard portion. Okay, so 51. Got a bump <clears throat> coming out approximately the same distance. And we're going to put a, a bump. Okay, and then we're going to go 64. 64. Goodness gracious. What? That's a big range for a small plane. Mm -hmm. ah. Okay, I have to use the front ones. Yes, I know they're not the same, but they're the same. What I mean is this measurement to the outside edge is the same as this measurement to the inside edge. If you guys didn't already know that, put in the comments below. We learned something new. And boskage. Don't forget the boskage thing. If you guys have ever used the word boskage in your ordinary life, 
other than watching Brian Phillips RC videos or reading Chinese manuals, yes. please, please let us literally know. Literally leave it in the Chinese or in the uh, in the comments down below because you're an extra special person who want to be friends with you. I just have a really good vocabulary. <sighs> That's one way of looking at it. <laughs> All right, so now that the center of gravity is marked, we can't test it. We know we're going to probably be flying this on 3S2200, right? Uh, I don't know. We haven't looked. It didn't say. It says somewhere. Mm. Okie dokie. If you say so, cam crew. 2200 3S. It does say. Hey, look. Let's show the people how you literally insert the battery. Literally, that's how you stick your battery in. Well, but how do you hold it in? Just like this. That's not gonna work. Or this. <laughs> Hold on, it's this. No, I'm trying to get to this oh. thing. <laughs> this thing. See, when you put this in, it's got this, it's got this sweep that holds your battery in, supposedly. So you better hope your CG is good because there's no adjusting it. There is too, you just have to remember, this is built in a different time. This is, this is a different time when that was normal. You would have to add dead weight. A different time. You make it sound like it was 100 years ago. I mean, it was a lot's changed in 100 years. <laughs> People were barely flying 100 years ago. Yeah. But that's all right. <clears throat> anyway, guys, if you're new to the hobby and you're like, wow, this seems really hard. Um, it's, it's not really that hard. We like to make things harder than they should. Velcro be. is one option you could use on this plane to actually help hold your battery because that's really what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to take a big slather of this stuff and stick it on there and then peel what it back battery did I think you were gonna use? and then stick this in here well you got to remember batteries have gotten smaller the hole hasn't <clears throat> well my concern is the way I see this is two different ways of doing this one we can make a tape pocket that has Velcro on it. That's kind of lame because then you're married to the exact same, the exact same size mm -hmm. battery. The other option is we could try doing shelf liner in there and the shelf liner would probably get glued right in this spot here. Let me see. Right there. But I don't know if I like that. But just remember, this all pertains to where the receiver goes. Okay. Yeah. So remember, Tower is going to try to talk you into getting an AR620 because they think that you're not going to want to spend the money on a 631. And my thought is, if you want your plane to fly good, then go ahead and get the 631. And if you are one of these pilots that flies in only perfectly calm conditions and goes and measures every throw to see that it's exactly identical to what the manual says and you want to have like high rate, low rates, mid rates, sub mid rates, ultra high rates and this sort of thing, then you probably find with the 620. Otherwise, if you're a normal person that flies normal airplanes that are available today, you are going to be spoiled just like me with stabilization and the feature of auto leveling if you need it. Okay. I'm going to suggest you go with a 631. Okay, now a 630 might be kind of nice in this, but because it's a bigger plane, you might get a little bit far and you may lose some range. At some point, I don't want to be the guy that told you to get something that's too small. So that's where the receiver is going to go. And we just have to be mindful. We have to be mindful of how big the wire bundle is going to get, hon. I know. That's kind of what I was thinking. <clears throat> so if you guys are concerned about your bundle, don't forget you need to think on that. This has an internal antenna. This has an external antenna. Price difference is like five bucks here, okay? It's not really a deal breaker, but this is also end pin mm -hmm. and this is top pin. In our application, oh man, end pin would be nice. It would put those things right out there into that cavity. I know, but. But I, I, I don't think we have the one 632. 630s for me, are more reserved for planes that are like, a, you know, like a fast EDF jet that's small, like a 50 millimeter EDF jet, where you want to have that stab stab stabilization, that locked in feel, but it's like really a tight opening. This is a tight opening. Like that would, that would meet the criteria. But it's a bigger plane 
you know, flying further away from you, right? <coughs> Excuse my coughing off camera. See this guys, this is the 620, okay? So it's simple, it's got the internal antenna, and then basically you plug in there, you would stick it into this op, you know, opening here, and then the wires are gonna go that way. Well, and since it's not stabilized, you could literally just shove your whole bundle in under you can your just seats then. stick your wiring wherever you want. You just tuck it under. Nobody would even know it's there. They'll know. <laughs> They'll find out. And they're not at a fortune time. Oh my goodness. So the 630 is very tempting mm. here. Hey. Also the 637T. Let's talk about that for a second. I can't even get my fingers the in there. The 637T would also have end pins, hon. See the 637T. But then you got two antennas to deal with in that little thing. By the way, the difference in price between a 631 and a 637T is pretty significant. The big advantage here is you'd get your battery telemetry, which is nice because you got to remember if you're out in the middle of a lake and your battery is dead and you're dead stick landing, yeah, that could suck. This will keep battery telemetry on that lead, okay? I have another suggestion. Suggestion? What? what if we don't use the provided tape and we do the 631 upside down in here so that the wires would go I don't think up. the 631 is gonna be a problem. I think it's gonna work. Okay. I'm just saying, I want people to know there's other options. Okay, so let's, let's lay out the options here. Okay. <clears throat> this is what they want you to get because they assume you're gonna get this one, okay? The 620, oh, mm -hmm. sorry, there's glare. So the 620, this is what they think you're gonna get. I would not recommend that. <clears throat> I would do the 631 or the 630. With the understanding the 630 is gonna be good for people that are away from crowds that have less RF interference and stuff like that because you do have the advantage of a larger antenna, okay? So then also the top pin might be a little more accessible once you mount it in there, but they have provided Velcro for us, literally. Mm -hmm. Now, if you really want the best of both worlds, the 637T would make sense in this application. If you want the battery, the battery voltage telemetry, that's really handy. You also get more telemetry features <coughs> that you may not need, okay? So I'm not using the 637T, I don't think it's necessary. I'm gonna use the 631, we're gonna make this work. Okay. All right, we'll pause and get set. All right, so we have to start with making a profile to attach to this thing, okay? So off camera, I pulled the staple out because that's always super annoying to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this is the 631. So this is gonna be a stabilized receiver so it has AS3X and safe. And if you're using a transmitter that doesn't have forward programming, then that's one advantage to going with something that's not stabilized because you need that forward programming to set it up, okay? So, and if you're looking for an economy transmitter, if you haven't seen it, the cow transmitter, I mean, excuse me, the NX7E is black and white. It's um, very futuristic looking. Or if you get the NX10 and you want the more channels, then you can use the NX10. The cool thing about using the NX7 is that you get, I think, most of the features except for Wi-Fi, which... <laughs> and voice that doesn't voice. have the voice oh, yeah. audio events. I'm just looking at the landing gear. I feel like they're bent funny. I just noticed this. They'll be bent as soon as I land, don't worry guys. <laughs> all right, so here's the thing. So we have to set up what we're gonna, you know, have all this stuff attached to. And I thought this was gonna be nice to have this in the background, but it uh, just looks messy. But basically, in order to know <clears throat> what channel's what, you have to build your profile. That's why we're doing this next, okay? So we'll cancel one back and I gotta look away from the screen, add new model, okay? Then it goes to this screen and we want an acro, which is what this is, a heli, a sailplane, a quad, a template, bind and fly. We're gonna go to acro. Okay, so yours won't take as long as mine does, but this one takes a while because we have like a million models in here. So model type, if you re-change that, it, it's going to reset everything. Model name, this is where you type in the name, and this is called the beaver. But because we have a number of other beavers in our life, hmm. we need to make sure that we designate which one it is. So we'll pause and come right back. All right, so we got beaver 1.5 meter tower, okay? And then aircraft type, this is where you set your wing type. 
one aileron and one flap should be correct. And then the tail is just a normal tail and we'll select the image. I think I'll go to probably like the carbon cub, be like the closest with wheels. Now this could have floats. So if I had two of them, I could do one with floats and one with, one with wheels sort of thing. I'll just do that for now. Okay, flight mode. I wanna set up my flight modes. Now, keep in mind we have <clears throat> choices here, okay? Normally this would be my flaps, that's gonna be my flaps. Normally I don't use this, normally I use this for the modes. We don't have retracts on this plane. We won't ever have retracts on this type of plane. So, I mean, we could do this, but one thing I've noticed is that when I set my auto leveling <clears throat> versus AS3X, I end up in a condition where I tend to turn on my auto leveling once I roll for takeoff mm -hmm. because I'm used to retracting the gear and it's just a muscle memory thing. The catch, the caveat to that is if, if you only need two modes, you can get away with using the A switch here. Now, I used to hold true to that like almost all the time unless I had some strange thing I wanted to do, like a bomb drop or something weird. And even then I have tried to be very specific on replicating the same thing. So I know when I go from one plane to the next to the next, I know what the features are, so I know where the switches are. Uh, and I would suggest you do the same thing, but we've been kind of in this weird moment where we've been trying to decide, do we go to the D switch all the time because then I can set an off condition. Mm -hmm. So if you were to see this plane fly without AS3X, I could leave the off condition true and then I could have auto leveling with AS3X and then I could have AS3X. That'd be my standard flight mode would be AS3X. Flight mode two would be off and flight mode three would be auto leveling with AS3X. So it gives me the opportunity to demonstrate what it's like to have the feature off, which is something we don't ordinarily do. Now, that being said, this is a six channel receiver but there's additional channels beyond that are not pluggable. And that's one of the big advantages to use in the 631 or the 637 or the 8360T. Said it right for once. It did. <clears throat> Along with a 10 channel transmitter because obviously you don't need 10 channels to fly this plane, okay? But if you have the NX6, you have a seventh channel that's usable for modes and things like that. If you have the NX8, you've got eight full channels. You could do every channel that you would need for this. Or if you have the NX7, which we haven't played with yet, the 7E, then you would have most of the same features. So I think one way or another, we should be fine, but we'll talk about it here. And um, just because we don't have retracts, that does give us that added flexibility. In this case, I think we'll just go ahead and put it to switch D. Now, the reason we talk about rationalization for our decisions is because we're trying to teach you how and not just, we're, we're trying to teach you why and how, okay? So the why, but, but the why is the, the feature that becomes so subjective, okay? You don't have to do it because of the same reasons I do it. Okay, this is gonna be AS3X, so I'll just hit cancel, cancel, and it clears that out, and then I'll type AS3X, which stands for Artificial Stabilization 3-axis. 3-axis. Yes, X is not the correct letter. <laughs> I don't know if you ever noticed that. I didn't notice that, it's been like nine years. I, I notice it every time, <laughs> it makes me smile. Okay, so then I make an audio event. That's what we're doing right now. This is just a label, okay? Labels do not actually set the mode, but it is feedback. They're safe, and then shortly after is AS3X, okay? AS3X mode. Okay, now this will be displayed on the screen while we're flying up here. And then this will audibly announce, okay? So then when you flip the switch, then you can set your other settings. So in my case, I'm gonna do cancel, cancel, and then I'm gonna type the word off. Okay, so off, and then we'll scroll down and find the off. Okay, off. And then we're gonna set this up for safe. Now remember, again, just a label here, guys not actually changing the mode, but it's gonna sound like it's changing the mode because we have set the labels and the audio event to do this. But just remember, sensor-aided flight envelope is auto-leveling, okay? Okay, here's safe mode. Okay, so we have our labels attached. 
<clears throat> now for channel assign, I wanna make sure that aux2, they're saying it's set to B, that's just a default they do. I want to actually use aux1 with my flaps, okay? So we're gonna change aux2 to D, and that's gonna do our flight mode, okay? Now the other way you can set that up is you can actually use F mode right there, like that. <clears throat> I'm gonna set it to D, okay? That means that this switch is attached to the flight modes. I'm gonna use right knob on aux3. Switch A is still technically set to gear, but we're not using it, mm -hmm. okay? So we could use that for something else later if we want, or if we had had thrust reverse come available, if we added an avian ESC, then we could go ahead and attach this to switch G, which is usually what we use for thrust reverse when we're making our assignments. Thrust reverse and throttle cut being two that you just never really want to change where you're doing it. Some people are using this panic button or the I switch for thrust reverse and they'll press it and it just gives a full burst of uh, what I would call pilot fatigue. And that's a cool way to do it. But remember, this is a float equipped plane, so it would be really nice if we had thrust reverse. So if you guys have the budget for it and you wanna kinda like trade off some of the budget for the 637T and get an avian ESC for this thing, it's only got a 40 amp ESC, it's not a very expensive ESC. I mean, in the realm of ESCs, let's say. Right. You get a lot of features. And then, <clears throat> if you go to this, you still get your battery telemetry through the smart technology. So you can use the Avian ESC with the 631 and bank the money that you would have spent on the 637T. Um, because I feel like the battery voltage is the most important, critical, predominant value, okay? Because you're not gonna need a Vario for an application like this. But you will get the Vario if you go to the 637T. I just don't think you need it. Boop, 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 beep, beep, boop, 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 boop. I can't do it very good right now. All right, so we've got those set. <clears throat> All right, so going back, we'll walk back out to the main menu. We're gonna scroll down to dual rates and expo and set this up. Switch F for all three features or all three control channels. We're gonna do the exact same setup. It's gonna be 5, 10, 20. And the rate's gonna be 90%, okay? So as you can see, then we're gonna to go to elevator, <clears throat> switch F, five, 10, and 20. And this is why I don't measure <clears throat> the throws on my control surfaces, because between this and AS3X, it just gives me a good starting point, gets me back to the ground the first time, and then we can make adjustments accordingly which are rarely needed, but occasionally when they are needed, we have enough to get to the ground because we'll start here. We have a doubling effect or a halving effect. If we thought it was, okay, so starting here, you take off and it's too touchy on the rudder axis, then you would go like that and you would make it less touchy. That becomes your new center. So this becomes 20, that becomes 40, probably drop the rate down to like 70%. And then this one becomes what had been the middle, which was 10. Okay, so you'd be like 10, 20, 40, or 10, 20, 30, or something like that. Okay, so that's just, the idea of all this initial radio setup is to give you a chance to fly to the ground and, and land safely. Make your adjustments and then continue on. Throttle cut, very critical, should be the top of the setting, but it's not. Throttle moves, throttle doesn't change, that means it's working, the throttle cuts off, and you'll see it springs to life. Throttle cuts back on. Flap system, we're gonna tie that to switch B. <clears throat> we're not gonna set them up yet because we wanna make sure we don't cause any sort of an issue with the throw of the servo and I don't know which direction it needs to go. So really, I'm gonna set it to like something. I'm gonna set it to something. This is what we'll do instead. We'll set it to something and we'll set it to something else, the opposite, okay? And then I'll put it in the neutral setting, okay? So now I'm in the neutral setting. I'm not gonna set my elevator correction We'll do that later. Okay, so then the initial radio setup. Uh, timer, we're gonna set a one, uh, one five minute timer. It's probably gonna go a little bit longer than that, but we'll set it starting with the throttle out over 25%. With a voice call out at one minute, nothing at 20 seconds, and then a voice countdown at 10 with an expiration of tone and vibrate and tone every minute thereafter. 
All right, so we should be set. If we go to monitor, you can see how we need to plug things in now, okay? With the understanding that this is gonna operate our master gain, and then this is gonna operate, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so with that being understood, I'm gonna click over here. <clears throat> We can start landing wires. Now, keep in mind a couple of things. I gotta cut some zip ties. We have to be mindful that whatever we do, we're gonna still have to control, we're still gonna have to control what happens to these wires. You know what I mean, camera crew? Right. So I'm gonna grab a couple of these like small zip ties, small-ish zip ties, and then hopefully we can use these small-ish zip ties to help us accomplish our goals. Also, we have to be mindful that this is a spatially aware receiver, meaning it is aware of where it is in time and space. Its pitch access, its roll access, and its yaw access will be set when we do our forward programming because we'll set this up on its nose and it will then learn its position. From there, it's going to make decisions based on which axis of movement it has. So if this is the way we mounted it, then that would be different than if it was mounted this way or if it was mounted that way, okay? So there are many ways to skin that cap, folks, so don't be surprised if you have to think it through a little bit. You don't have to actually do the math or do the considerations of what position it's actually in because the receiver will take care of that or the transmitter will take care of that with the receiver when you get to that point in forward programming, which we'll go through in this video right now. So just stay tuned. All right guys, so first thing we gotta do is untape and then we put one small zip tie on. Did we already cut it off? I think it's like under your big zip tie. Really? Serious? You didn't take it off, did you? I don't remember. Maybe I did, I think I took it off. Okay. Okay, so we have lights here. These lights are going to plug into these weird ones. <clears throat> now I don't want to be tied to my main uh, my main power plug, so I'm going to just cut this zip tie now, because I am currently tied all up. <coughs> Excuse me. And because of that, I want to untangle some of this. Okay, so that's untangled enough to where we can at least work with this. Okay, so the flaps. This is the lights. Okay, so I need the lights. That's my most critical thing first because it's gonna eliminate many things at once. There's brown is down, brown is up. I'm gonna rotate that and just plug it in. Okay, so that takes care of one of them. I don't even really care which one it is. Then brown is up on this one. This is L2. And so it's just L2 now. Okay, so now I don't wanna drop these wires. So I'm gonna get the short one and I'm gonna plug it in first. This is flap. Brown is down. How do we tell what direction this is? Negative is toward the outside of the case. If you look at the silk screening on top of the plastic, do you see it or can you mm -hmm. see it? Yes, okay. I can see it there. So flap is on one, two, three, four, five, six. So channel six, brown is down. So that means it goes like that, okay? Then the next most critical one that's falling all over itself is aileron channel one. What? Oh, there's two. We have a Y cable. Now, if you wanted to split the ailerons and do a full length or do crow or something like that, you could do that. Full length flaps or crow. I'm not gonna do that because I don't think it's necessary on this plane at all. Do we have to hold those? No. Okay. We don't. I know you're concerned it's gonna fall. Brown is up this time. <coughs> Sorry folks for all the yakking. We promise we'll get better and never get sick again. Ailerons go to channel two. If you went to my left side, you'd be able to see maybe the markings better. Okay, so these are, these are gonna be a la elevator, channel two and rudder channel four. So elevator is channel three. So don't worry about what they say the channel is because that doesn't mean anything. They were probably talking about back when they had a connection with tactics radios or whatever, and that's not what we're dealing with. So this is uh, elevator, so channel two. Yeah, it's channel three, guys. Okay. So channel, channel three. So channel, wait, hold on. 
Rudder's supposed to be the next one down. Rudder is four. I got it in the wrong hole. Oops. I'm gonna get you in trouble. Your hand is totally in the way over there. I'm sorry. I can see better over here. All right, if you say so. Folks, we try our best to get, get you guys a good view of what we're trying to do here. It doesn't always work out, but generally speaking, we do our best for what it's worth. Our apologies if we ever block you. All right, so everything is plugged in. Now, just to be clear, you do not need an active channel to plug this in. You can Y this into anything, okay? This is just gonna steal power and ground, okay? So I'm just gonna happen to go into channel five, but channel five is not actually doing anything with it. I could just as well plug that into the bind plug. It wouldn't matter, okay? But I'm gonna plug into channel five because it just is gonna support the other connectors better there. Okay, so now I have to figure out what I'm gonna do with all the wire bundle, which is what we talked about earlier. I apologize, I know my hands are blocking your view and that's just the way it's gonna have to be for now. Okay, so I'm taking this relatively bigger zip tie I'm gonna go around what I think I want it to go around. And then I'm probably going to have to spend a few minutes renegotiating some of the cables back up into the reach in the grip of <clears throat> my zip tie, okay? So you see those ones fell down. Mm -hmm. So once I get those pulled up, then I can just kinda get them under control like this. And then I can just zip tie them. Now you guys are probably thinking, Brian, I can't really see what you're doing. And if that's true, I really honestly formally want to apologize that this is a tight hole and there's only so much room. We'll do the best we can. And this is probably it for what you can actually see. Okay, now this needs to be mounted. It is spatially aware. So I'm gonna grab this. This piece of Velcro has double-sided tape on it on the top, okay? So if you could just read that to the audience right there, whatever that says, that'd be great. Okay. It says toxic plastic chemicals. Just kidding. It doesn't say that. Camera crew is just hilarious. She's so sherry. <laughs> She's so sherry. Okay, yeah, we'll press that down. That's a piece of tape. <clears throat> so I'm actually really tempted to stick this underneath. Cause that would, that would get it out of here. Yeah, it would. Mm, I don't know. I'm gonna just do this. I'm gonna just stick the antenna onto the double-sided tape slightly. And that's gonna allow us to just turn it back like that, okay? okay. Now I'm gonna take this thing and I'm gonna stick it back in here. Now folks, I understand you can't see, but that's where it's gonna go, okay? <clears throat> now my hope is this antenna, you don't wanna pinch that antenna cable, okay? So that's basically where that's gonna go. Now I just need to make sure I have enough room and access. Can I stuff this back up into this hole? And the answer would be, I don't know yet, but we're gonna try if we can. That'd be really nice. Your whole bundle? <clears throat> I can't get the whole bundle, but I could try to get part of the tail of the bundle. Cause I'm just thinking, how the heck am I gonna get my battery in here if this is all together like that? Hope you guys understand how frustrating it is to try to film this stuff. If you want to help support us, buy the planes from the links. It's the best thing you can do for Brian Phillips RC. Okay. Good enough. Now I got to figure out how I'm going to get this back there. Okay. Should be just a... Remember, don't pinch this. Don't clamp onto it. You see, I'm just holding it loose. Okay. I mean, not so loose that it slips out, but loose. So that's going under some chairs. There's some simulated chairs in here, I think. Okay, there's evidently a cavity back there, good. All right, so there's that. So that should get us at least to where we can go ahead and initiate um, and bind the receiver. Okay. So that's our next move. So if we take our battery, now remember, we don't have a prop on here yet, so there's no risk of getting our hands cut, but we will eventually need to be weary of that, okay? Because like, you're gonna load this, it's gonna be right there, okay? So I'm gonna get my menu, click, scroll down to bind, be ready, okay? Just like that, 
<clears throat> now remember, it's spatially aware, but that doesn't really matter yet because it's not even been initiated yet. And I don't like the way, you see this bundle of wire? My concern is there's so much movement on this. I don't like the movement because of this wire, okay? So what I might have to figure out a way to get some slack on this. Because I, I do want it to be controlled, but I don't want it to be controlled with regard to, you see how, I, if it was over here, I wouldn't care. <coughs> I gotta pull this out again. I don't know if you guys can tell what I'm fighting, but what I'm fighting is this bundle needs to have slack on a couple of the wires. And there's no slack on a couple of the wires, but there's slack on a couple of the others. It's like, these are fine, this is fine, that's not fine. And you know what that is? That's the stupid flap wire. And that's the shortest one. Yep. And so we're not gonna get a whole lot better, I don't think, than that. Son of a biscuit lover. What a mess. Okay, I'm gonna clip this. I'm just gonna take this zip tie out of the application and we'll see if we can resolve it a different way. I have another idea, another trick up my sleeve, okay? This is just gonna be a little bit more challenging to show. And so I'm just gonna slide this back in here, okay? Pressing it in hard. I'm not really worried about hitting the bind button or any of that crap, because I can get my fingers in there just fine. I'm more concerned about all this mess. And it's like, <clears throat> as you can see why I tried the zip tie, it's pretty evident why I did that now. Yeah. Correct? Yes. Okay. So I'm just gonna try taking my fingers and just sliding it back into this underneath the chair. It's just this, this thing is big too. You know, that doesn't help. That being the, that is the, uh, what is that, hon? Light what am I trying to say? The light controller, thank you. I gotta get that antenna back to the other side, which I did. So now the light controller, I'm just gonna try to slip this in and under. And if I can get that back there, I think we're gonna probably be good enough to where we can just kind of live with it. Remember, you don't wanna unplug cables, so you can't press too hard, but you gotta press hard enough to get it back there. You know, and these are all limp noodles, so it's like, you're trying to press a bunch of limp cables back into a cavity. It uh, doesn't always work as good as you'd like. Okay, so they're back there now, and it's actually not terrible, but there's still a couple of these cables, like the aileron cables, that are gonna be ugly, and it'd be nice if I could get them tucked in here a little bit better. Now, the other thing is, how do you keep these from popping out later? Good luck. You won't. That's my nice way of saying you won't. Okay, so they're all where they need to be, with the exception of one. Yeah, and that's good enough too. I think we've got it pretty good now. So now that we're in position, if you come from the other side, like I keep repeatedly asking you, see this? This needs to be there. And that's why I keep wanting you there, camera crew. I know it's annoying. Here it is. I understand, but see that? Mm -hmm. It's gotta be there. And you see how it moves every time I bump it? Yeah. That's because Velcro doesn't hold the absolute position as good. And this is the ESC and it keeps popping free, but I don't know how it's gonna do anything else than that because every time you plug in your battery, you're gonna have a, an issue with it, okay? Yeah. So that's why we work through those things. It's very frustrating and annoying and people don't like doing it, but the truth is it probably needs to be done, okay? All right, <clears throat> time for the battery to go in the hole. Wish me luck. <laughs> Plugging in the plane. Like the lights already. Flipping the plane onto its hind feet. Like I said, I have to actually hit the bind button. So I'm gonna click and scroll back down. Of course, this thing always times out. It's very frustrating. I don't know why there's a timeout on that screen. There should never be a timeout in a user interactive screen like that. Just I'll press the button when I'm ready to time it out. Okay, so back on the time legs. Ah, oh, timed out again. Okay. All right. Every axis of control is backward, <clears throat> as usual, and the flaps 
are not set yet, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna set is flaps because I want them mechanically attached as soon as possible. Remember, this is what we do. We install the radio, then we set up the radio, and then at the end, we set up AS3X and safe. Very simple, it's not a hard thing to do. Okay, looking at this, that's the linkage. Okay, see how it moves that side, and then it moves, it's gonna slip off of that one. So I'm gonna move it all the way this way. See, that's toward my belly. So I'm gonna click and go into the flap system. When I say toward my belly, I mean, I'm always holding the transmitter like this, and it's, you know, that's the direction it's going. Yeah. Okay, because it's easy to articulate. Everybody's gonna have the same circumstance. All right, so then this, we have to tighten that once we get the flaps where we want them. Okay, so obviously the flaps need to be level, and they need to be level, like retracted, if you will. Hmm. Well, it's not all the way level, but it's close. I don't like that it's not all the way level either. I wonder if there's something mechanically binding it, or if that's just the end of stroke. That's all you're gonna get. <clears throat> okay, well, I guess in that case, I need to match that to the other side, make sure they're even, and then I'm gonna tighten this screw. Now, there is one other adjustment we can make. Okay. Now, pay, stay where you are. Okay, so it looks like this one deployed a little further than this one. I don't know if that's, that is hardly any movement. <clears throat> okay, so watch this. I want the flaps to operate the opposite direction. So I'm gonna go to reverse. And since we're here, ailerons are backward, elevators backward. And I think the rudder was also backward. So we'll just do all those and then we'll reverse the flap, okay? Oops. So if that's all the way down, now I can go back up from reverse. I'm gonna go over to travel. So on flaps with the fully out, you have to pay attention to how far that's gonna move. I think that's all it's gonna do. Do they look even? They do look pretty even. Okay, that's the important part. So if that's all the way out, I'm gonna just go to 145, okay? Man. Okay, so I'm pulling that past zero, so I'm gonna loosen this now. I'm gonna see if I can buy a little bit more range. Okay, so I went to 145 on the top and 145 on the bottom. That just opens up how far it's gonna call that servo to travel, okay? So now I wanna make sure these are all the way up and set. Turning that very hard. Okay, so now take off flaps, landing flaps, barely any movement, but they're definitely yeah. moving, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so now that we have that done, we can go ahead and act on the rest of the settings. Son of a biscuit lover. Can you guys see what happened there? Yeah. My battery popped out, but that's because I don't have it secured even remotely. And that's just the way it goes. When you don't secure your battery, it's likely to fall out. Might as well try. Let's see how bad it is. Yep, the wire's in the way immediately. Okay, I'm gonna move the wire to the side here and just uh, see if I can get this in there. Yeah, I was afraid of this. I don't have my antenna things back on so I can lay this back down again. Okay, so let's talk about where the battery is. Obviously it fell out. That's a, I, I think I'm gonna try putting the lead down into the cavity where like the pilots would be. The cockpit, not the canopy. You don't sit on the canopy, you sit in the cockpit. How the heck is that gonna work? Okay, we're gonna try the other way. That ain't gonna work. <clears throat> hmm. Now obviously you're not supposed to put it back there, I don't think, underneath the seats. That's not gonna happen either. So I think I'm gonna try this again. I'm gonna try putting this out where the pilot sits. Oh, that's the instrument cluster. I don't wanna knock that off. 
Okay, so I push it in there. Now we're just gonna try this. Yeah, we're gonna have to just, I don't know if we're just gonna have to cram it or what. Cause like, this is just a different design battery than what they probably had back in the day. But that's good enough for what we're doing. It's gonna hold the battery. That's a good thing. Cause sure. we were concerned about that. Um, all right, so let's finish this setup. It should, we're actually not too far from being done, guys. I mean, it seems like we're a mile away, but we're actually like maybe a quarter mile away. All right, so come back around. Okay, so we have the flaps working. Take off flaps, landing flaps. Roll left, roll right, elevator up, elevator down, yaw left, yaw right. Everything is working with the exception of, now throttle cut has not been tested. I'm gonna walk out of the menu. Throttle cuts off. We have throttle, okay. We know that it's working, but we don't know if it's going the right direction. So <clears throat> there's one trick you can do is that is to just put on your prop. Now that we know that we can trust our throttle cut, I don't mind putting the prop on because that's what we're doing. So folks, if you're new to Brian Phillips RC, we appreciate you being here with us. We've done literally thousands of videos like this. It always seems like what happens is we start with plenty of time and then we end with no time. Mm -hmm. Speaking of, how's the mic? Um, mine's almost okay. dead, but you're good. So I loosen this screw. That's going to open up the collet. The collet is going to allow us to slide this onto the shaft. See how I'm holding my carbon fiber rods? Man, that collet is tight. Okay, so I'm going to pull this back. Now that I've loosened the nut, I can push this back. And then I want to open up that collar on the collet. You see that? Now it'll let me get on there. Oh yeah, beautiful. Then I can just tighten this while bracing. And yes, this is uh, one of two ways that people hurt themselves in the hobby is by uh, having lipos that cause fires and people to get cut on props. So don't do either of those two things. The way you can minimize your chance of fire with lipos is to use high quality smart lipos from Spectrum. That's one way. <clears throat> The other thing is if you're using dumb batteries, make sure you discharge them so you can keep the chemistry set. Now I'm not gonna do anything with the spinner until I test this, throttle cut is off. Definitely have forward thrust. Feels good for power. That's like 24%. Throttle cut's on and tested. Okay, now that it's on and tested, we're gonna trust it. it sounds good. It's a really quiet prop. Yeah. Nice and balanced. Guys, that's one thing that's so weird is like you get these planes, right? And we have problems with linkages and spacing and battery location and then we get a perfect prop. Yeah. Like I don't get it. Because normally what happens is we have everything else perfect and then a crappy prop. Mm -hmm. Like what is the chances of that, right? So guys, we love building these planes. We love reviewing them. We love sharing the ins and outs of the hobby that, or at least as we've learned them. And we have learned a ton since we started this whole endeavor. So we appreciate you being here with us. We're gonna test one more time. Safety first. Oh yeah, throttle cuts on. Everything's tested there. Now that gives us throttle. That gives us elevator rudder flaps going in the right direction. We're gonna put our little canopy hatch or whatever. This thing is so hideously ugly because of the trimming job in China was terrible on this one. So that poor guy's probably gonna lose like three weeks pay. <laughs> <clears throat> and that actually like snaps on there, right? Oh yeah, it's, okay. it holds on to the carbon, carbon fiber. You guys see how I'm doing this, how hard this is? I mean, it's like literally. You have an aerospace engineering degree? Obviously. Okay, there you go. Much better. Yeah. Eat your heart out, China. So that's that. Um, now that that's trimmed, again, you know, some of these gripes that we bring up on the channel, they're really not like that hard to deal with. And so when you hear us complain about stuff, just remember, take it with a grain of salt. We're complaining because we're spoiled brats, obviously. And as many planes as I have in my living room, you should be able to understand that that's true. Okay, awesome, okay. I don't like that click. I, know. I don't like that click, it makes me nervous, like something's gonna break free. I want you to come over here. Every time. 
whatever, it is what it is. Okay, rudder, not quite centered. See that? Mm -hmm. Okay, not quite centered. Elevator, believe it or not, it's actually perfect. So we just literally took this cap off. We're gonna take it off again. The rudder needs to be centered. Grab the antennas, pull straight up. <clears throat> if you need to adjust, this one's probably not gonna do the trick. You need to get your crappy one out that's even longer. And we are going to look and see which one moves when we move the rudder. And it's obviously gonna be this one. Okay, so if you wanna show the people what I'm doing, just release this. Now look what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take my fingers, I'm gonna pull this to the center so that it's centered, and then I'm gonna tighten this screw. The lady's calling out timing, okay? Now the rudder's working, returns to the center-ish. Okay, looks good to me. Elevator up, elevator down, y'all left, y'all right. Roll left, roll right, take off flaps, landing flaps. The primary axis of control are done. Now we go into the radio setup portion where everybody says, what'd you do and how'd you do it? Watch the video and we will share. And if we go too fast, click the little gear over here and slow down. Yeah, you can change the playback speed or make me go even faster if I'm too slow for you, okay? Now this is important for you to understand because I know a lot of you guys are in different parts of your RC experience or maybe you're just coming back to the hobby or you're, um, you know, really, really well versed in this area and you don't need help in this area at all. Uh, but everybody's coming from a different place of skills and uh, practice. And so we're gonna show you what we know and hopefully we do it at the right pace. Okay, click, scroll down to forward programming. Takes a second to connect. Once it's connected, we're gonna go to gyro settings. This is the first time it's different. It says first time setup. You have to have all your crap set right first <clears throat> with the exception of the Ford programming. Set, set at level, hit continue. Now, this is one time where you might wanna set the plane level for flight, okay? But it's actually, it's technically later, but we'll still do it anyway. Uh, what are we gonna use, pillows? Just a pillow. I think the pillow's about right. No, it's not, we need two pillows. Why are, we, why are we leveling our aircraft? Because I want it to fly level when I turn on auto leveling if we would use auto leveling, okay? Which we, we don't really use it, but we demonstrate how to set it up. That's too much. That's not gonna work. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. I'm gonna try the, I wonder if we can do this. It's not very often our faucet gets in the way. Our faucet's kind of in the way today. That's way too high. Yeah. I wonder if we could take off these things. Try it then. We could also put some like books or something. Oh, That's there we go. That's go. pretty good. Okay, so all I'm trying to do is get the plane level. I don't mind like a very, very, very slight down nose attitude, nose down attitude. Our flap over there is down further too, by the way. which is gonna to wanna to yaw the plane this, or it's gonna to wanna to roll the plane this way. Okay, so it's level, continue. Set the level on its nose, or set the plane on its nose and hit continue. Continue. Flight orientation, just like that. Three, evidently. Now, yes, you can trust this, and we will for a minute, but we're gonna confirm it, okay? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna hit continue. Gain channel, uh, gain channel select. Okay, so we have the right knob on aux three, so we can click and scroll to aux three. We can apply that. Dancing once, AS3X is now active. Okay, click, re-enter. Now we're gonna set up safe. Gyro settings, flight mode setup, flight mode one. See, it's not even working yet because we haven't assigned the channel. So we want channel D. Aux two, aux one is not D by the way. That's a default in their stupid setup. Now watch this one change to a two and then change to a three. That's how you know it's working. Okay, I want AS3X active here. I want AS3X not active here and I do want it active here. Okay, so with AS3X it's on, with off it's off and with Say if it's gonna also be on, okay? Walking out of that menu. Now we go first time safe setup. 
We've already set the FM channel, but we're gonna go in here and let it pull it, okay? Continue. I want it in flight mode three. Now, this is where having the plane level both directions is where you need it to be. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna level model and capture attitude. This is a tail dragger. Okay, okay. This is where we're gonna tell it on flight mode three, we want self level with angle demand. See how you can read it right there, angle demand. Mm -hmm. I can totally see all the letters. That's what I thought. We want it off there. Safe is still off. Okay, now we're gonna go to next. Now I'm gonna apply. Now watch what happens. Dance once, dance twice. That's AS3X and safe, active. Okay, so that's a normal reboot. So now at this point, we can double check that everything is working. And the way to do that, the easiest way to do that is to literally go and just change the gains, okay? So now, this is also going to be our initial testing. So are we in auto leveling? No, we're in AS3X mode. AS3X mode, okay? But nothing's happening, Brian, why? Because I haven't given throttle, holding the tail, Throttle cuts off, throttle at 50, 100%, throttle cuts back on, everything's tested and safe. Kind of hard to hear if it's on, it's on. Yep. Mm -hmm. Elevator up, elevator down. Now remember, I'm saying up relative to what I'm looking at. Up, down, roll up, roll down. It's subtle because I'm in one times mode, okay? You guys can't see probably, Rudder's working, you can barely see it. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to test this even easier. Okay, go to forward programming. Notice that my arm is right where the prop is just in case that thing starts. Gyro settings. AS3X settings. Four times. Now you can stay in this menu, turn your knob all the way up. Now watch this. Oh yeah, you can definitely tell it's working yeah. You can definitely see all the axis, and now I will show you from my perspective how this looks. Okay, so looking at the rudder, it's moving to counter the roll on the, or the yaw on the aircraft, just to show you in the background, there's a radio. Now the elevator up, elevator down, yep. Check both ailerons, aileron up, aileron down, okay, and aileron up, aileron down. If you don't do this test and your plane crashes, I don't feel bad for you, except I do. Just check it, please, okay? This is on 4X with the gain all the way up. Now I'm gonna show you the next test you have to do. Okay, so just moving this, you can see how much that's moving. Very easy to see. Moving my gain on the right knob all the way to zero. Show them the right knob at the same time, please. All the way up, all the way down. Halfway, off, on, off, safe. Up, down, okay? You don't need to check all three axes of control on that, but it is a good idea to at some point check them. I'm still at 4X, I'm gonna take 4X and I'm gonna go down to 1X. I'm gonna walk out. Okay, now, it's barely moving, right? That's because I turned the gains from four to one. Now, when you're on your back, put it in safe. Oh, trying to find the quickest level. Quickest route to level. Now look at the elevator. Elevator's pointed up because it's trying to bring it level. Elevator's pointed down because it's trying to bring it level. There's not a lot of throw on the elevator, folks. All right, so we have tested all the different circumstances that need to be tested with the exception of now that all the AS3X and SAFE is on, we need to make sure that our controls are working. So we're gonna put the plane like this. We're gonna stand behind it. We're gonna make sure we can see Elevator up, elevator down. Roll left, roll right. Yaw left, yaw right. Everything is working. Take off flaps, landing flaps, and modes. Off, safe mode, off, AS3. Okay, and our timer has already proven itself to work as well, which is great. So this plane is ready to fly, and if we answered your questions, smash the like button, I hope you already did that. 
But when we do these radio setups, it's a lot of technical crammed into a very short time right at the end. It's like the money shot of the video, okay? When you build these planes, there's a lot to it. And if you do it right, they're very good. I love the flashing strobes. I love the anti-crash beacons. I love the tail lights. Oh, cool. <coughs> so cool. And then of course, red is right returning, meaning when the plane is returning to you, red is on the right. Mm -hmm. So cool. Can't wait to fly it. Not going to be flying it right now because the windsock is out all the way and it's going to be crazy. So that being said, guys, now you hear it. First, I'm Brian Phillips RC. We hope this is the Beaver from Tower Hobbies, 1.5 meters of pure delight. Not quite pure delight to put together. It was, there was a couple of steps that were a little bit annoying, but to be honest, we've had a lot worse. Yeah. And uh, show them the box lid there. We saved that when we were cleaning up the other day, mm -hmm. which was in the evening. And look, we're up one whole piece of Velcro, oh, guys. Talk about so value. Exciting. You know where I'm gonna put My that? day has been made. I'm gonna put that right here. In the other bag of So guys, if you wanna help support my wife in her pursuit of dealing with me. Of <laughs> minimalism. Please. Yes, then make sure you support us by buying our planes for you, because then maybe they'll be out of stock so they can't send them to us. Yes. So that being said, if you do wanna help support us, uh, we have Patreon and PayPal. PayPal, of course, we're friends and family. Just remember that because then nobody pays fees. And uh, it's not like you're buying a good or service. You're just helping to support us, which is really nice. Uh, the donations do have a lot of fees, by the way. So friends and family, that's the best way if you're gonna do that. We have YouTube super thanks, which are just like one time attaboys, five, 10, 20 bucks, whatever it is that you got. And then there's also monthly support through YouTube called YouTube members. So special thanks to our members. I think we're up to like 10 right now, mm -hmm. which is pretty okay. cool. So thank you for being members. If you are, it does help to put a smile on our face and it helps us to kind of offset some of our frustration with Google right now because they are attempting to block some of our links, which is very frustrating. And so as per usual, the very best way you can help support Brian Phillips RC and the best way you can help give your special one finger salute to Google for being greedy SOBs would be to click on the links in the video description below and help reward their greed by helping to support Brian Phillips RC. <laughs> now, just keep in mind the way this works is we make small commissions from these companies when we review them and then you buy through the link. If you watch the video all day long and you never buy anything from the links, they owe us nothing, we've earned nothing. But there might be like some advertising revenue that comes from YouTube, but just to keep an idea, like, cause we've been doing this so long, we feel like we owe some level of transparency. That becomes somewhere between like maybe one fifth, one sixth of our overall earnings the earnings that we make on YouTube come from selling planes, okay? We never want you to buy this plane just because we did it today. We want you to buy this plane because it meets your needs, it looks like it's got the quality you want, I like the lights, I like the way the flaps went together, you know, whatever it happens to be. We're not trying to tell you buy this one because we happen to review it. We're saying buy this one, when you do buy it, buy it through our links, and then you win, we win, the manufacturer wins, and it completes this little ecosystem of RC excitement, okay? Now, two and a half hour build videos, I wouldn't qualify as excitement, but what comes from the two and a half hour videos is excitement, and that is a better virgin experience with your plane, okay? When you go out and you made your plane, you're not gonna hopefully be crashing if you follow the steps that we suggest. And then if you watch our flights as well, you're gonna see what we adjusted from the maiden flight as well. And so we try to bring you guys high quality, substantive, long format, and I would take the long to a degree that nobody else does on YouTube. But at the end of the day, we wanna help you guys get from in the box to in the air. And mostly we wanna get you off the couch and started, okay? So when you do buy from the links, it's not just about making a couple of bucks for us, although that does really help and it is a big part of our life. And so we appreciate you doing it because if we're spending, if you and your wife are spending 40, 50, 60, 70 hours a week on something, you Together. know, it'd be nice to have a few dollars that come in from it, you know, cause it is, it is a family experience. Really the whole family uh, sacrifices for it. I love this stuff. So I would probably do it, you know, like myself for free, but if it was just me doing it for fun, it'd be one thing, but it's different when the whole family gets dragged in and we have a family of six. Also, just so you know, the monies that are earned on YouTube largely go to 
gigantic projects that make the RC experience even more cool here on our little aerodrome. That's right, I learned that word this year. It is a thing. But uh, we are setting up for the pond, which is really exciting. Uh, we've already got the runway out here. Uh, eventually we'll have the full scale strip out there and then there'll be the dam runway next to the pond on the dam. And then there'll be a dam gift shop up there, which is actually just a 60 by 80 building. <clears throat> we hope. That's our plans. That's our next like four to five years. If we're lucky, if we can squeeze it in that quick, cause that's gonna be a lot of fundraising. And really you guys don't need to send us money for that. You just need to watch the videos, smash the like button. When YouTube recommends it, watch it. Watch the whole length of the video, buy the things from the links. Those are the things you can do that are really, really helpful to the performance of our channel. And if you really wanna help us, and if you're still watching, you're probably one of our biggest supporters because most people don't watch our whole video and we know from the analytics. So that's how you can do it. What a sweet plane. And we appreciate you guys being here with us. As always, Spectrum NX10 has been doing really good. The super small gripes we have with this were mostly when we went from the six to the eight, from the eight to the eight, because we broke a switch on one of them. Or no, I got it wet. That's what we did. Mm -hmm. We got one wet. So we ended up going to a different eight. Later that got fixed, by the way. We just didn't have time for it at the time. Then from that eight to this. So we had a database issue with overlapping some of the numbers and the sequencing of the models. Beyond that, we've had really no problems with this. I do put tape over the top of the scroll wheel now as a precaution when we fly in the rain, which we did fly that in the rain last night, had no problems. Mm -hmm. uh, with this, it just kind of was dark. So anyway, hopefully you guys get to see that. We love putting these shows on, but we're late and we gotta go. So guys, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. So much more coming from Brian Phillips RC, world's best audience on YouTube.